We in the clouds, no, we is not looking down. Y'all make it noise, but we don't hear the sound. Wow, sound like you hate. You think we finished, but we in the kitchen. Cooking up dishes and constantly fishing. And teaching repentance to all of our people, cause this is the mission. Yeah, this is the mission. Yeah, we in the clouds, no, we is not looking down. Y'all make it noise, but we don't hear the sound. Wow, sound like you hate. You think we finished, but we in the kitchen. Cooking up dishes and constantly fishing. And teaching repentance to all of our people, cause this is the mission. Uh. Cause this is the mystery, huh? Yeah, we in the Return the throne. We been in the zone. Spirit on me, the scripts my cologne. Funny business, no, we don't condone. Mind blown, your confusion is shows. Not even hiding the hate. Refer to my bishop as n****. I thought we all wanted the gates. But some of my people gon' swim in that lake. How you sit in your face? In the streets, by the word, with the truth, or what you heard. Want to teach, then you need to learn. Get the 11 purge, or you get the scourge when we get salvation. It's going to be real strange to the nations. Living in the wisdom of the ancients. Want to get caught with the saints, be patient. Got to all self respect. I had enough of these demons and heathens just searching to circumvent. No way you're around it, you can't even doubt it. We hop over her. Mike check. Run a 40 yard dash, catch a 100 yard pass. Took the whip, caught the lash. Now we get the Pikachu, turn the ash. The view from the chariot window. Catch a cruise to the moon with my Kenfo. He done made for the Doom Nintendo. Jake playing these games, get six fold. Double 07, the golden gun. They shooting them nukes and I'm holding one. Bible, these shooters are holding one. This is the fruit of the chosen ones. Kingdom. We in the clouds, no, we is not looking down. Y'all make it noise, but we don't hear the sound. Wow, sound like you hate. You think we finished, but we in the kitchen. Cooking up dishes and constantly fishing. And teaching repentance to all of our people, cause this is the mission. Yeah, this is the mission. Yeah, we in the clouds, no, we is not looking down. Y'all make it noise, but we don't hear the sound. Wow, sound like you hate. You think we finished, but we in the kitchen. Cooking up dishes and constantly fishing. And teaching repentance to all of our people, cause this is the mission. Uh. But this is the mystery. Oh, yeah, we in the Returning the throne. Let me tell you just what I've been known. Fix your face, nigga, cause I'm in the zone. Duplication, yeah, you look like a clone. Play with your kids, not me, cause I'm grown. The prophet's gonna pull up. The cherry is here, better look up. And we on the tour, better book us. Cause there go redemption, and some of y'all ain't worth the mention. It's too much living that you pass over dinner. I got the scripts for a sinner. You distant, so we can't remember. All of your words been diminished, like who is you? That name don't ring a bell. Don't you got a t-shirt to sell? Y'all stagnant, slow as snails, and we taking over, sick of sale. Proving the pudding, we pushing the button. Demons around, but I'm covered with blessing. Wait for the king to come back from the heavens and punish my enemies. Y'all ain't no friend of me. Join with the people that stole our identity. Laden with sin, you love your iniquity. Turn on your brethren with Judas's energy. Love for the money, the scripture, the remedy, but you ain't want it. You love your oppressor, not for the pressure. You my opponent. First John 2, 19. Now you wasn't with us. Now you a loner. Looking for niggas that only condone you. Burning the fire that hotter than sauna, cuz. We in the clouds, no, we is not looking down. Y'all make it noise, but we don't hear the sound. Wow, sound like you hate. You think we finished, but we in the kitchen. Cooking up dishes and constantly fishing. And teaching repentance to all of our people, cuz this is the mission. Yeah, this is the mission. Yeah, we in the clouds. No, we is not looking down. Y'all make it noise, but we don't hear the sound. Wow, sound like you hate. We think we finished, but we in the kitchen. Cooking up dishes and constantly fishing. And teaching repentance to all of our people, cause this is the mission. Uh, cause this is the mission. Uh, yeah, we in the clouds. Dream team, huh? yeah, huh? hey, yeah, yeah, hey, let's go, yeah. stand up, let's go, hey, 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 12 on top, top. we got a street on lock, oh, lock. my kids will be out of the knock, lock. they skimming but I see the pot, pot. what's in the work, what? we work as a 12 on the dot, 88, I want to sign up my name, y'all tell them boys that we ain't got Bishop on deck.
salute down. Let's face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Holy Father, we come before thee, Lord, in your holy Sabbath. Have mercy upon us. Have compassion towards, towards us, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Our Father, which is in heaven, honor be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us for our sin. Forgive other sins against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from all evil. The kingdom is yours, Lord, and the power and the glory forever, Lord. Father, we also pray for the brothers that go out and preach the gospel. Send your angels with them to guide them. We also pray for those that are sick among us, Lord. Heal them quickly and speedily. We also pray that, Lord, Lord, you may rest upon us the faith, your, the faith. We may believe in this. Then we may apply these laws, statutes, and commitment into our life. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we also pray that, Lord, you may check our enemy. Destroy them. They're trying to destroy this movement. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we also pray for our brethren that become our enemy. We pray that, Lord, you may remove these dumb spirit from them. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you, Lord, for the bread and also for the drink. And also for the strong drink. In Christ we pray, we ask, Amen. Amen. Men Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, and salute. Salute. Down. Face, sisters. To the daughter of Sarah, we say, Shalom. Hey, shalom, 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 Israel. Most high in Christ, bless. We in the building. All praise to the most high, man, giving us a chance to another day of repentance, another day of good class from Bishop Nathaniel. So I was about to get down, about to go down. So you guys, make sure you got your pen, your pepper, and your Bible. It's about to be a long note. So your guys stay in the spirit, man. Then we also, uh, yeah, I also want to thank uh, brothers and sisters in Kansas City. Me and Malakaya was able to go down there, at least for the brother that been, you know what I mean, they're trying to kill one of ours. So you touch one, you touch us all. <laughs> so all praise to the most high for the hospitality over there, those brothers and sisters over there. Bishop, you ready yet? Yep, so we're going to continue to do what we do here in IUIC, man. Especially these brothers, we also want to thank the Most High for allowing us to go outside this country and do the work we do. No matter how hard it gets, brothers, <laughs> we got to keep on pushing. Because we want... Oh, yeah, because we want all Israel to be sealed, right? So some place we don't, we don't even need touch yet. So we need your guys to step your game up, you know? Men of Allah, man, come on, brothers. That's why we're in here. This is not a hangout spot. This is where we build prophets. We build That's mighty right. men. We build builders. You understand? You are the builders. All right, y'all go out here, gather the 12 tribes, brother. That's your job. That's a soldier job. Think as a soldier. Move as a soldier. Breathe as a soldier. Ready to take order, man. Wherever the Lord needs you, you're ready to go. Don't let this system destroy you. All right? So your guys stay in the spirit, man. As Bishop getting ready. Oh, praise to the most high. How are your sisters doing this Sabbath day? Good. Brothers, how are y'all doing? Good. We say shalom to the brothers and sisters online. To our friends and frenemies. Frenemies. All right, today we're going to talk about 
Lazarus and the Lake of Fire. Write that down. Lazarus and the Lake of Fire. But before we do that, we're going to open up a little bit of history. Let's put up the first book entitled, Who is Esau Edom? This was written by a so-called Jewish man, Amalekite, Edomite. Put it on the screen. Thank you. I'm glad y'all give me the heads up, so I need y'all to do that through the rest of the lesson. Give me the heads up. So this is uh, Who is Edom by Charles A. Weissman. Let's go inside the book. Who's reading for me? Soldier Kalel, sir. Soldier, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Kalel. Kalel. Okay. Uh, read the underlying parts, please. Herod was a shrewd and unscrupulous tyrant. Herod, as many of you know, those of you who don't know, you can look him up. He was a convert to Judaism. He was what we call today Jewish man. Go ahead. And was despised by the Judites because he was an Idumean and not one of their own so stock. That, that tells you that Herod was not an Israelite. He was an Idumean. Idumean is another name, a Greco-Roman word for Edomite. Edomite, meaning red people. Why does that mean red people? Because the blood shows through their skin. That's why. They are not a melanated people. Read. Herod hated the people of Judah, and one of his first acts was to execute 45 of the leaders of the old aristocracy to eliminate any rivalry for leadership. So Herod was a cruel dictator. Go ahead. Having secured the kingship, Herod next destroyed the priestly line of Hycranus. That's John Hycranus. He destroyed his family line. That's one of the sons of the Maccabees. Go ahead. The last being... Antigonus, who taunted Herod with his Idumean origin mm -hmm. and asserted that the kingdom should fall on one of the royal family. So Antigonus would taunt Herod, saying that the kingdom could not go to an Idumean, an Edomite. It had to be one of the royal family, which was one of the Maccabean families. As you, when you read the history, Herod had them all killed. Okay, so jump down to the next highlighted section, please. We thus find that in the years just before the time of Christ, Judea was controlled by an Edomite faction who usurped the Judite name, land, and heritage. Jump down. Historically, the Edomites became known as Jews. See that? Because they were forced to Judaism. They were forced to become circumcised and keep the laws, Okay. This is why they got mad at John the Baptist. Remember when John the Baptist corrected uh, Herod for having sex with his brother Philip's wife? He said, it is not lawful for you to deal with your brother's wife. So she was furious, and that's when she wanted his head cut off. Why? Because Herod and them knew the law, but they, that, the law does not jive with their spirit. Read that again. Historically, the Edomites became known as Jews, a term derived from Judea which was derived from the name Judah, being the royal line of Israel, though they were never of Judah or Israel. So what's good about that, it tells you that the word Jew derives from Judea, which derives from Judah. Jew and Judah is the same thing. Some say Yah, uh, uh, Yehudi, uh, Yehuda, Yahawada, same word. Okay, just they've got the Y instead of the J. For those of you yayas out there, we love you though. Go ahead, give me the next page. That, that part right there. The origins of the Jews. The Jews of the day fall within two main types the Sephardic Jew and the Ashkenazi Jew. So he's talking about the Jews of today. That, those you see in Israel today, those you see on CNN, the Caucasian News Network. Go ahead. The Sephardim are also known as Spanish Jews and constitute about 5% of the Jews in the world. The Ashkenazim are the East European Jews, which were found in Poland, Russia, Germany, and Western Asia. This group of Jews make up 90% of the so-called Jews in the world. Many reference and historical sources have unequivocally identified that the bulk of the Ashkenazi Jews were derived from a people known as Khazars, or Khazars in some texts. The original Jewish Encyclopedia of 1905 revealed that the main stock of the Jews came from this 
Asiatic people known as Chazars or Khazars. So what's good about this, although they use the word Asiatic there, we know already, these are the people of Herod, same group of people. They are Edomites, Idumeans. But what's good that I like, it says the original Jewish encyclopedia. Because many times when we bring out this history, they say, oh, you guys are racist. You're filled with hate. No, 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 no. This is why we try to find books written by their own people. Go ahead. Khazars, a people of Turkish origin whose life and history are interwoven with the very beginnings of the history of the Jews or Russia. Ru Jews of Russia. Of Russia. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get fooled by Turkish, that term, Turkish. That means those white folks that lived in Turkey. That's all that's saying. They're not a different breed of people. Go ahead. Historical evidence points to the region of the Urals as the home of the Khazars. Next page. Um, yes, that part right there. The Khazars are also of Edomite stock. This is what I was saying. Although they use words like Turkish or Asiatic, the scholar that put this book together knows that these Khazars are also of Edomite stock. They're not of Israelite stock. Go ahead. And both stocks make up the present-day Jews. Mm -hmm. They make up the present-day Jews. Next section. According to the Jewish Encyclopedia, the original stock of the Khazars came from the land of Edom. You see that? Mount Seir. That's Mount Seir. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Go ahead. As it was written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Romans 9, 13. Mm -hmm. Jump down to the next section. God not only hates Esau, Edom, and is against these people, but refers to them as the people of my curse. Isaiah 34 and 5. This curse is not just on Esau, but also his seed and his brethren. Can somebody tell the Christians this? How come the Christians can never figure this out? But he's going to tell you why they never figure it out. Give me the, give me the next page. There is not one favorable or positive statement in the Bible in relation to Esau, Edom. Hey, you know what's heavy about that? You have books like the book of Enoch and the book of Jasher. One of those, I forgot which one, but one of them says that God forgave Esau. This is why it was never put in the original King James Version Bible of 1611. It was never in the Vulgate uh, Bible or the Septuagint because it contradicts the bulk of the other scriptures. So that's why this scholar here says there is not one favorable or positive statement in the Bible in relation to Esau or Edom. So when you do see a positive statement that God accepts them, you know it's what? Wrong. False. You need to tell some of the other Israelite camp, because there's an Israelite camp that accepts Esau in their congregation and says that God accepts them. Oh, Lord have mercy. And the black woman's marrying them too. I, sisters, I, 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 we can't help you. We try. We try to help you, sisters, but y'all don't listen. Go on. If God hated you and your ancestors. Think about this. Now put yourself there. He's, he wants the reader to put yourself in this statement. Go ahead. If God hated you and your ancestors, how would you react and what would you do? By natural reaction, you would be against God and his people. Why? Because you're mad he didn't accept you. Go ahead. And try to prevent them from finding out you are Esau. You wouldn't want nobody to know you're Esau, that you are the most hated man on the planet by God. Go ahead. The one God is against, knowing that if God is against something, so will his followers. Mm. Go ahead. Who is it that tries to conceal their identity as Edom? Mm. Go ahead. The one hated by God mm -hmm. by claiming to be Israel. Wow. The one loved by God. Mm. Only one group of people reacts as though God has hatred for them. That is the Jews. That's why anytime you mention Christ or Messiah, no! He has never existed. They are totally against Messiah. Go ahead. Why do you suppose the Jews form organizations such as the Anti-Defamation League to monitor and combat hate and to identify hate groups? 
Would not Esau want to do this? Why is it that it is predominantly Jews who promote the anti-hate laws and other hate crime legislation? If you were Esau Edom, would you not do the same? An Edomite would also want to infiltrate churches. Now, I didn't put the next page, but the next page explains what he just said. An Edomite would also want to infiltrate churches. That's why you got that love doctrine. They All the theologians, a lot of them were uh, so-called Jewish people, and they push love, love. Romans 9.13 doesn't mean what it says. It's all about love. God loves it. John 3.16. That's why the black, black and Latino Christians, they can't see because they're under a spell of white supremacy from Jewish people. Give me the next book written by Yosef A. Ben Yohakana. Okay. Uh, written, Witness to the White Jewish Race Myth. Let's go to inside the book. Zoom it. Start that. Rising Negro and or Black anti-Semitism in the ghettos. This writer, formerly a practicing so-called black Jew, myself, is definitely convinced it is nothing else but just that, racist religious bigotry. For white Jews in the Western Hemisphere, the United States of America, and the rest of North America, Mexico and Canada, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean islands, the same as white Christians and white Muslims, for the most part, see themselves as a race of people who are distinctly separate from their co-religionist black Jews anywhere, much less the so-called American Negro Jews in the United States of America who are not even tolerated. Behind the secret doors of the above citations, it is necessary for black Jews to uncover and bring to the open scrutiny of the general community of man these forms of Jewish racism and Jewish religious bigotry as black Christians like Dr. Kerry, black Muslims like the late Al-Haji Malik Shabazz, Malcolm Little X, and other well, I want black you to see. Notice he says behind the secret doors about uh, it is necessary for black Jews to uncover and bring to open scrutiny the general community of men these forms of Jewish racism. So that part, behind the secret doors, a lot of people don't realize they have secret meetings about black people. Okay. And I'm going to show you a clip as evidence where the white folks, no, Arabs, hired a Jewish guy to go in undercover amongst them with a hidden camera. Read them. And other black people of all other religions have done and are still doing the black Jews or Israelites, etc., are more than duty bound in this regards. We are sacredly obligated for our own survival and prosperity to remove all of this form of cancer in Talmudic rabbinical, rabbinical Judaism. Rabbinical. Rabbinical Judaism. That is gnawing away culturally and physically at our African people both at home in al Kabulan and outside in the so-called diaspora. So now let's take a look at the video about the secret meetings they have. Give me that clip. Come on, that's it. Apartheid was never used with Israel. In order to discredit the apartheid label, the lobby has launched a campaign to try to co-opt black South Africans. Black South Africans who were apartheid activists, who were brought to Israel, saw the reality, came home angry at the US. They felt lied to. They felt that there, someone had tried to steal their narrative. This is an effective tool. Wait, stop. Well, pause it right there. What he's going to explain is they, when the black South Africans who are against apartheid, that uh, uh, y'all know what apartheid means, right? What does it mean? Segregation. Segregation. Okay, same thing they did over here. But anyway, it ended in 1994. 
So what they did when the black South Africans who were against apartheid started to join forces with the uh, Palestinians in Israel about apartheid, uh, what Amalek, what Jewish people did was fly busloads of the black South Africans to Israel and put on a whole show for them of love and peace. Play on. This is an effective tool. Bringing these black South African former BDS activists, now Israel supporters, to American campuses. During his volunteership, Tony learned that the Israel Project has been developing a strategy called Stop Stealing My Apartheid. The plan is to feed articles written by black South Africans into the American media, claiming that BDS has distorted their history. If you're disgusted by segregation in this country, if you're disgusted by South African apartheid, then you should also be disgusted by Israeli apartheid. Another workshop was addressed by Israeli diplomats from consulates in the US. Black Lives Matter had attracted particular criticism after voicing support for the BDS movement. It appears that Israel's diplomats may be trying to challenge the apartheid label by canvassing support amongst African Americans. The major problem of Israel is with the young generation of the black community. Black Lives Matter starts there. I had last week a, a, a dinner, sit down dinner at my house with some of the people, which are considered the leadership of the black community. And it's very important people. They can be part of our uh, doing an activity. Pro Israel groups are trying to cultivate a new generation of black leaders that is pro Israel by bringing them to APEC conferences on all expenses paid trip. For black freedom, that also sees black freedom as situated in a, in a larger context. In 2014, Israel launched the siege of Gaza. In the same summer, police in Ferguson killed Mike Brown and Ferguson rose up. And on the news at night, there would be both the latest out of Gaza and the latest out of Ferguson. There was solidarity that was expressed online with the Ferguson uprising. There were Palestinians who took to Twitter to cheer on the rebels of Ferguson and explain how to deal with tear gas. Israel's diplomats have responded by evoking the legacy of Martin Luther King, claiming that the campaign for Palestinian civil rights bears no resemblance to the civil rights movement in America. Dr. Clarice Jones, who wrote the draft speech for Martin Luther King, I had a dream. He was his lawyer, he was his close friend. He's somebody that I reached out to. He became a very close and personal friend. Because of that relationship, we published three articles in the Huffington Post explaining why their agenda was hijacked. And Martin Luther King will turn in his grave if he saw the anti-Israel tendencies or the policies that are starting to emerge in Black Lives Matter. There's something on one hand laughable about it, but there's something also really insidious about this. You're using the credibility of a freedom struggle to try to oppose another freedom struggle. And I think that that's appalling. Fellowship program run by a conservative think tank called the Hoover Institution. The whole fellowship is scrappy. It's like, you guys are being like foot soldiers and conservative. This is actually the first foot soldier activity that I think it's been important to do. Now watch. Mean, well, hold, 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 hold it, pause it, pause it. They hired black people. This is what you're going to show you here. Now, they already said they hired black people to write some reports. Now they're going to hire some more poor black people. Go ahead. Back to the first foot soldier activity that I think it's been important to do. Tony, what's your connection to the conspiracy that we're all part of? Yeah, the Israel Project. So you can't uh, not come. 
their plan is to disrupt the National Conference of Students for Justice in Palestine. Marshall said that the pro-Israel protest had been poorly planned. It's a very fly-by-the-pants procedure. It was basically just like Noah Paula coming in the like, look, there are these jihadis who basically support <laughs> suicide bombing, and they're at a campus, and you have to stop them. So, a chance to shout at Arabs? As we're leaving, we mentioned to our boss yesterday that we're going. She's like, oh yeah, that's mandatory. You need to go. While they've been told they have to take part in the protest, not everyone on the bus is convinced it's good for their reputation. Do you know what my worst nightmare is? I'm actually not kidding. It's a photo of Dion and I together. And we're just like clearly identifiable. And they're like, oh, who are these like traitors who sold out at the Jewish conspiracy for money? And I'm like, we did. We cost $50,000 plus benefits. See that? They paid them $50,000 plus benefits. And this is what happened. And believe it or not, I know this might shock what I'm about to say. They've done the same thing in the Israelite community. I'll just put that on the table and leave it right there. If you understand, you understand. If you don't, you don't. Um, from there. Okay. Everybody understand what we just looked at, right? All right. All right. Yes, sir. You see the part where he said they put people inside to disrupt mm -hmm. the organization? Yeah. They put people inside here to disrupt the organization too. Yeah. They are here right now mm -hmm. because they can afford it. Remember, these people sit in $40 billion, and that's one organization. So they got, they got the money. They got more money than us. And that's why uh, with regard to you captains, when, when brothers or sisters rile up in here with some doctrine, believe it, they're getting, some of them are getting paid to do that. Throw them out. Do not give them opportunity to spread no nonsense. Throw them out immediately and don't shed a tear. Right. Hope everybody understand that because I ain't going to shed a tear. Go, nigga, go. So we're in some dark times. We are in some dark times. Times and I'm going to show you. Now, give me Ecclesiastes 43. I touched on this last night with some of the brothers. We are in some dark times, and the Lord has been showing us, but we don't catch it. Which verse you want to start, at, Bishop? Uh, six. The book of Sirach, chapter 43, and verse six. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. From the moon, it is a sign of feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. IT, I need you to do something for me. I didn't give it to you, so I hope you can step outside the box. Google phases of the moon. Phases of the moon, new moon phases, or full moon phases. Okay, put that up. All right, now y'all see... On the left, my left, new full moon. Now, we let y'all know that, the, that the, what they call a full moon is actually the new moon. And I believe you showed a book that said that too, right? Okay, good. Now, you see the phases. It goes from bright and it phases all the way to dark. It's decreasing, right? Everybody see that, right? Yeah. Then it begins to increase. Yep, go around, go around, increase. Okay, so now. Listen good. Read Ecclesiasticus 43 and 6 again. Just put me in a box on the screen. Leave that there. Put me in a box on the screen. Read 43 and 6. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of time. The moon serves in her season for a declaration of times. Time. Go ahead. And a sign of the world. That's the part right there. And a sign of the world. The moon symbolizes a sign of the world we live in. I know that uh, there's a pause right there. <laughs> I want y'all to take a look at the full moon again. The new moon. It's bright. It's in its, what's the word it used? So with a P, perfection. When was the earth in its perfection? During the time of Adam. Everybody understand? Now what happens? Give me the, the highlight. Put it on the full. Now go around. It begins to get what? Decrease and darkness begins to cover till it gets black. Watch this. Give me 
Second uh, Ezra 7 and verse 13. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 13. For the entrances of the elder... For the entrances. Sorry. For the entrances of the elder world... The elder world during the time of Adam. Were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. The elder world brought forth immortality back then. Now watch this. Give me 2 Ezra 14 and verse... Let me look. 20... Bear with me. 14. Bear with me. I don't have it in my notes. Oh. <sighs> bear with me a second, y'all. Bear with me. <laughs> second Ezra 14, 17. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 17. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age. So much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. Now that verse right there. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age, meaning time. So much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell in them. Meaning the more time that goes by in this earth, more evils will increase. Everybody understand that? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 60. And 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60 and verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Darkness shall cover the earth. Go ahead. And gross darkness the people. And gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So meaning what? When the Lord turns, it's going to, the earth is going to be told in total darkness. Just like a phase of the moon. From there, go back to 2nd Ezra 14, and let's start up at verse 10. 2nd Ezra 14 and verse 10. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 10. For the world hath lost his youth, and the times begin to wax old. Mm -hmm. For the world is divided into 12 parts, and the 10 parts of it are gone already, and half of a 10th part. So it's like a 1030 on the clock. Okay, it's already passed. This is what the angel is telling Ezra. When he says, we look at the earth like a clock. He said what? Read that part again. For the world is divided into 12 parts. Can you put a clock on the screen? Find me a clock. Find me a clock. Because I'm slow. I'm slow. I need help. Just find me a clock. Come on. Come on. Put it on the screen. Okay, just like a clock. Read it again. For the world is divided into 12 parts. So you got 12 parts on the clock. Mm -hmm. And the 10 parts of it are gone already. 10 parts is gone already. 10 o'clock gone already. Go ahead. And half of a 10th part. And that's that 1030 mark. Go ahead. Now this was back then during the time of Ezra. During the time of Persia media. The angels telling him this. Everybody don't understand this. Go ahead. And there remaineth that which is after the half of the tenth part. So he says from that time, all that's left is what? What is that? How many hours is that? An hour and a half? That's an hour and a half. Everybody understand that? An hour and a half. Now, watch it. Give me second Ezra 6 and 6. The book of second Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 6. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, and through none other. That's Christ speaking, go ahead. By me also they shall be ended, and by none other. Read. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first? When shall be the end of the first world? Go ahead. And the beginning of it that followeth. And the beginning of the world that follows. Go ahead. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, 
And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. It's Esau is the last ruling empire. That's what he says. That's what it means for Esau is the end of the world. When you hear some people out there, you hear some Israelites say, no, 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 uh, Esau is the Arabs. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Because if Esau is the Arabs, that means they going, we got to go into captivity again. And that make no damn sense. The hell wrong with you? The Bible says Esau will go to the moon. I don't see no damn Arabs going up there. What right. the hell is wrong with you? That's why I don't, some of these Israelites don't listen to them. Say, some of you women are all over the place. You listen to everybody, just simple as hell. When you get caught up in the foolishness, shame on you. Stop listening to them. You're going to get lost in the source. So read that verse again for me. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The hand of a man is betwixt the heel. The hand of man is betwixt the heel. And the hand. That's the other nations. Go ahead. Other question, Esdras, ask thou not. Give me second Esdras 11 and 1. Watch this. In case you, some of you watching online going, ah, I kind of dispute what you're saying. Shut up. Listen. The book of second Esdras, chapter 11 and verse 1. Then saw I a dream, and behold, there came up from the sea an eagle, which had 12 feathered wings. And three heads. Now the question is, well, who is this? Give me that in Obadiah. Hold on, we're coming right back here. So don't drop this. Obadiah, we're going to read one through four. The book of Obadiah, verse one. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God, concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. Uh-huh. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye. And let us rise up against her in battle. So that's NATO. They're going to, they are prophesied to rise up against America. Go ahead. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Esau is greatly despised. Come on. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou hast dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Hey, do y'all have the Caucasus Mountains on file? I need y'all to roll with me in the spirit. Okay, that's not the Caucasus Mountains. That, uh, that's the Caucasus Mountains. Put that on the screen. I was about to summon Malafia for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Okay, this is where the, where the Khazars dwelt that we read about at the beginning of today's lesson. This is where they dwelt. Okay, so read on. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Mm -hmm. Whose habitation is high, mm -hmm. that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? In order to say who shall bring me down to the ground, you got to have what? Power. Power. Go ahead. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. As the eagle. Read. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. So when they landed on the moon in 1969 and they said the eagle has landed. They have mementos all throughout the country in regards to that. Okay? So Esau's symbol is what? Eagle. Let's go back to 2 Ezra 11 and 1. 2 Ezra chapter 11 and verse 1. Then saw I a dream, and behold, there came up from the sea an eagle, which had twelve feathered wings and three heads. And I saw, and behold, she spread her wings over all the earth. And all the winds of the air blew on her. And so were, hold on. From there, get, jump over to verse 37. So verse we're talking 30, about the eagle and all her forms. Watch this, verse 37. Verse 37. And I beheld, and lo, as it were a roaring lion. This roaring lion is Christ. Go ahead. Chased out of the wood. Meaning it ran out of the woods. Mm -hmm. And I saw that he sent out of a out of a man's voice unto the eagle. The voice that's coming out is the voice of the prophets. Go ahead. And said, Hear thou, I will talk with thee, and the highest shall say unto thee, Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts, whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them? See that? That the end of their times might come through them? So this eagle would bring about the end of this time. Everybody understand that? Okay. I hope y'all get that. So 
What have we learned? Go back to uh, Ecclesiastes 43 and 6 one more time. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 43 and verse 6. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times. The moon is a declaration of times. Go ahead. And a sign of the world. The, wor the moon is a sign of the world. It's symbolic of the world. It started out in its perfection, and it decreased, okay, until it gets dark. That's what we read in Isaiah 60, verse 2, okay? Then after that, what happens? After Esau, who comes, brothers? Jacob, like we read, and begins to go right back. That's what the moon symbolizes. Everything has a... Thank you. Thank you very much. All praise to the Most High God. All praises. So, uh, in this spiritual darkness, I want y'all to understand this part we're about to go over right now. This spiritual darkness, because right now this is the, hey, hey, I forgot where this is in Revelation. Get me, it says this is a kingdom of darkness in Revelation. Find me that. Find me. Who know where it is? Captain Young, where is it? Darkness. Yeah, yeah, that one. 16 and 10. Thank you very much. Let me take a look at it. Let me take a look at it. Yes, read that. The book of Revelations, chapter 16 and verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. Upon the seat of the white man. Go ahead. And his kingdom was full of darkness. His kingdom was full of what? Darkness. What? Darkness. Darkness shall cover, shall cover the earth. Go ahead. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. Read. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. And repented not of their deeds. They're not going to repent. Although they see judgment coming on this earth, then these people will never repent. That's not in their spirit. Keep on waiting for your reparations. Go ahead. Read on. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. This is what's happening right now. And the water thereof was dried up. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. All right. That's all I want out of that. So now. In this kingdom of darkness, brothers and sisters, I want you to pay very close attention because this is going to be the most important part of the class. I know the moon part was deep and heavy, right, Malafia? Go ahead. So, so Bishop, so the, the, um, so the darkness in the moon, when the moon is dark, that represents sin and Satan and all the wickedness, Edom and all the wickedness that we see taking place right yes, now. Yes, sir. Right, that's heavy. I just wanted to make sure I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bishop, this is why uh, it's saying that. Actually, let's go back to uh, Christ is going to be the light. There should never be darkness. So, when we look at the sun and the moon today, it's actually, the moon today is actually them. You see how you look at the sun outside? Is them is naturally not light. It's supposed to be brighter than that. Exactly. Get, hey, give me that in Isaiah. Based on what Deacon Malachi just said, give me that Isaiah. I think it's thirty, around twenty-six. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, like Deacon said, everything out. What we see is dimness. Is darkness. I know you might think it's bright outside. It ain't bright. Read that. The Book of Isaiah, chapter thirty, and verse twenty-six. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. See that? The light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. Go ahead. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold. See that? So we, ain't, we, ain't got, we don't see no brightness yet. We're in the land of darkness. I want to understand what time period y'all living in. So now, let me get back to the main point, Malachi. <laughs> we living in the kingdom of darkness, okay? All of us in here, we get affected by this darkness. Don't th that's why every day we wake up, we at war. We got to wake up from this. Okay, what's going to happen today? Is we well, put on my armor. We malify, you got to put in that spirit in a moment. So we are at war. Okay, now, so the question in this spiritual darkness, our friends and family, and us too, all of us are in that. Well, give me 1 Peter 2 and 9. Watch this. I'm going to show you all something. 1 Peter 2 and 9, I think it is. Watch this. The book of First Peter, chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation. Hey, start it. Start it. 
Eight. I like eight. Verse eight. And a stone of stumbling. Christ is a stone of stumbling. Go ahead. And a rock of offense. Christ is the rock of offense. Why is he the rock of offense? Some of you get offended at the laws in the Bible. You get offended at the law. And then you blame the teachers. We're just the messengers. Go ahead. Even to them which stumble at the word. That you stumble at the word. Being disobedient. Whereunto also they were appointed. Whereunto also you were, some of you were appointed from the beginning of time. This soul will never be compliant with God's laws. Shazam. That's you. That's some of your mothers, some of your fathers. We can't change it. Go ahead. Watch this. But ye are a chosen generation. But uh, Israel, we are a chosen generation. Go ahead. A royal priesthood. Brothers, we are a royal priesthood. And holy nation. We are a holy nation. A peculiar people. We are a peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praises of him. Watch this. Who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we're being called out of darkness. Remember, this is a kingdom of darkness. We're in the final phase of the moon. So we are being called out of darkness. Now, the question often comes up, what about my family and friends? Should we cut them off? Well, I'll word it like this. I want everybody listening to what I'm about to say. The only family and friends to cut off are those causing you to sin. Everybody understand that? Because some of your mothers and fathers are not trying to get you to break the law. Some of your mothers and fathers are in agreement, although they have never come to the school. Some, and this is from when some of y'all talk with us about your family situation. Some of your mothers and fathers, they don't believe, but they're saying, okay, that's what you believe, but we still love you. You are our son, you are our daughter, whatever. Whatever you need, we're here to help you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That's some of y'all. Why would you cut them off? Don't cut them off. Okay, so now. But, what about them family and friends that say, hey, let's go sin. Let's eat some pork together. Let's go to Matthew 5. And let's start at verse 27. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. Read it again. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not commit adultery. One more time. Thou shalt not commit adultery. One more time for the brothers online. Thou shalt not commit adultery. One more time for the sisters online. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I just wanted that to resonate in the spirit realm in here. Go ahead. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Let's examine that verse. Now, of course, you see a woman you like, you're going to lust. But let's say you want to marry her. Is there a sin in that? No, because you want to make her your wife. But let's say it's a married woman or a woman you really don't want to marry. Now you're lusting. Is that a sin? Yes, that's the sin. Because all you want is wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You just want to dump your, you know, your sauce. Yeah, your sauce. <laughs> Where are we at? Go ahead. Verse 29. Now watch this. Watch this. Because now there may be people in your life that you know. There may be a woman that says, hey, you know, you and me used to get it on, blah, 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 blah. I talk old school. I don't know about this new generation. I don't know how to talk like y'all. But y'all used to get on back in the day. She wants to rekindle that situation, right? Or a homeboy. And he said, hey, remember, sis, that girl, we used to, we took, we used to took turns running the train on her. Let's read on. <laughs> and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Now that right there. If your right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Now that's not literal, brothers. Now there's a rapper that did rip out his eye. Because the Christian church never explained what that's talking about. This is talking about that. Hey, if y'all can find the article, pull it up. Um, so this right eye is that brother or sister that's causing you to sin. 
Everybody understand that? And I'm going to show you that with more detail. Go ahead. And cast it from thee, for it is profitable, profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So that one person that should perish is that brother or sister that's trying to get you. Come on, let's go back to what it used to be. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. So notice it says, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Now we're going to just circle that right there. We're going to touch on that later on. Read on. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. The right hand is still that brother or sister, friend, family, or kinsman that's trying to get you to sin. Go ahead. And cast it from thee. Read it again. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. It's offending you because he or she saying, let's sin. Go ahead. And cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish. And not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Give me Matthew 18. I'm going to touch on hell, though. I'm, I'm not running by that. Later on in the lesson, I'm going to touch on that. Matthew 18. Is that it? Okay, put it on the screen, put it on the screen, put it on the screen. This is him. This is him. Now, is there an article that goes with this, the picture? There was an article. I remember reading the article. And I remember saying to myself, self, this is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Singer Houston breaks silence about eye gouging incident. Now, does it say what happened? Ah, uh, let me see. Uh, if anybody sees it before I do, is this the article? What's going on a little bit? I don't know if that's... Is that the exact article? There was one where it said he was reading the Bible and it said, pluck your eye out. <laughs> that ain't it? Okay, y'all give me wrong information. But anyway, Matthew 18. Thank you, IT. I know you're trying your best. <laughs> New York in the house. Go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 15. No, no. I want verse 1. Oh, verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Mm -hmm. And Jesus called the little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is the same thing Christ said to Nicodemus. He said, except you be born again, you cannot enter. Nicodemus thought, how can I go back into my mother's womb again? I'm an old man. I'm grown. He said, are you an elder in Israel and you don't understand this? So the same lesson Christ taught Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews, he taught to us here in Matthew 18. What can, give me Psalms 19.7 about what converts us to becoming little children. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Just pause right there. I'm going to tell you, you brothers and sisters, I'll be, especially you men that's on the street, don't get hemmed up with these stupid people that will find a scripture written in the book of Kings that says uh, in Solomon's barn, I'm going to just throw a number out, he had 22 horses. Then when you go to Chronicles, it'll say he had 200 horses. And they'll go, see, imperfection. Or they'll see a king and it'll say when he ruled, he was eight years old in Kings. Then in Chronicles, it'll say he was uh, 48. And people will be like, see, imperfection. These are typos and things of that nature, okay? The Bible says, read that again. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. There's no problems with God's law. When God says, thou shalt not commit adultery, that's perfection. When he says, thou shalt not kill, that's perfection. When he says, thou shalt not bear false witness, that is perfection. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. that don't argue about typo. Oh, look. His name is spelled Noah, N-O-E over here, but in Genesis it's N-O-A-H. Why are you arguing about that? That's stupid. That's what black people do. Anyway, where we at? <laughs> Verse 3 again. The book, of, the book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 3. And said, Verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted. Now we know what converse us, God's law. Go ahead. And become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, did we finish 
Psalms 19, 7, or I just ran from that. Go back. I jumped from it. I'm sorry. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. Y'all can put that on the screen. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect. And then, wait, wait. I, just, I, wait, I did an interview in South Africa, and the dude tried to hem me up. He thought he was going to hem me up. He says, are there any typos or anything? No, he didn't word it like that. He said, are the writings in the Bible 100% accurate? Something like that. But I perceived <laughs> it was a trap. So I said, I said, well, there's some words that shouldn't be there. He said, like what? So I said, Acts 12 and 4, the word Easter. I said, that's a pagan term. The Israelites never celebrated that. When, and I said, when you examine it, the word Passover was there initially. So I said, when you read about Easter, that goes back to Ishtar. That goes back, to, which is Esther's name, which goes back to Ashtoreth in the book of Kings. Those were holidays of fertility, the fertility goddess, where we with sexuality and have babies and abortions. So I said the Israelites never celebrated that. So when you read from verse 1 through 3, it tells you we were celebrating the Feast of Eleven Bread. So he goes, oh, I said, oh, so you thought you was going to get me on that, huh? You're not going to catch me. <laughs> Always be prepared for these people that try to hem you up. Where we at? I'm sorry, read the whole verse now. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. We got to acknowledge we're the simple. Brother, I don't care what kind of degree you got, you are simple. Sister, you are the, we're the most educated general, simple as hell. The Bible says what? That part again? Making? Making wise the simple. If you want to be wise, you got to go to the perfection of the Lord, which is his law. His law. I don't care what kind of degree you got. Masters, doctorate, or whatever. You're simple. Okay? Until you come back to God's laws. I understand that. So now, back to Matthew 18 and verse 4. The book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 4. So you can't enter the kingdom except you be converted and become like a child. Start all over again. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child. Humble himself to what? God's what? Laws. Laws. Go ahead. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You want to be great? Humble yourself to God's laws. Go ahead. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. He said, if you accept one of them that believes in me, you receive me. Go ahead. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones trying to get you to sin, trying to get you to break God's law. Go ahead. Which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck. And that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Christ is saying it's better that you kill yourself. That's what the king of kings said. Go kill yourself, nooker. You're trying to get one of them that believe in me to sin. And, and Bishop, this offense also goes into your, your line on each other. You bear enforced witness against your brother. That could also go into the offense. God said, the Lord says it's best you kill yourself. Okay, understand that when you bear false witness, you lie, okay, you deal evil with your brother, okay, that goes back to the scripture that says, how you going to love God and the brother who is in front of you, you hate him, okay, so that goes back into that. You offend one of these young, one of these brothers that believe in Christ, understand, you got a, you got a price to pay for that. So he said, it's better that you put a millstone around your neck and go, put it on the screen. Go commit suicide. Go kill yourself. Wow, that's cold. They didn't teach me that in church. What verse we at now? Verse 7. Go ahead. Woe unto the world because of offenses. Woe unto the world because of offenses. Go ahead. For it must needs be that offenses come. See that? For it must needs be that offenses come. Go ahead. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Now you see that part right there? For it must needs be that offenses come. We're going to touch on that in a little bit. Why do they need to come? Go ahead. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee. If thy hand or your foot offend thee. Now that hand or foot is symbolic for your friend, family, or neighbor. Go ahead. Cut them off. Cut them off. And cast them from thee. Why? 
it is better for thee to enter into life, hope, or maim. It's better to enter into the kingdom without your friend, without your wife, without your husband, without your child, than what? Rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Y'all see that right there? Remember I told you I'm going to go back to that hell that we read about early in Matthew 5? That hell is this part here, everlasting fire. We still didn't get into the nitty gritty on that, but we're going to touch in a little bit in the lesson. That hell is everlasting fire. Go ahead. And if thy eye offend thee. If your eye offend, offend that eye is your mama, your daddy, sister, or brother. Go ahead. Pluck it out. Pluck it out. And cast it from thee. Mm -hmm. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Now he's calling it hellfire. Okay, all righty, hellfire. Now we're going to get the breakdown because Moses spoke about the same thing. Deuteronomy 13 and 1. And I want all you churchgoers to pay attention to this too. You Christians online and in here. Christians eating onions. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass. Stop! In church. I remember growing up in church. There was always, let me think first. There was always some woman who had a word of knowledge from God. God got a message for you, young man. You're going to be a man of the Lord. You're going to do this. You're going to do great things. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see him on TV. Oh, God, you send him the prayer cloth. You send him money and give him the prayer cloth and the word of God knowledge. You're going to get healed. And you're going to get this. Always. This, this is what this is talking about. Read it again. And hey, it, there's a famous dude to the stars. This black guy. What's his name? Reverend Not Reverend Ike, but him too. There's a thin guy. Uh, young, he might be about his, in his 40s now. But um, he always had a word of knowledge, word of wisdom. God showed him something about these stars, the rich and famous. I can't remember the second. Anyway, read it again. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and give it thee a sign or a wonder. And it give you a sign or a wonder. And the sign or the wonder come to pass. I had a dream about you the other night, or I had a vision. That you're going to get a job on the third Wednesday of October. Go ahead. Whereof he spake unto thee. And saying, a sign or the wonder come to pass. Whereof he spake unto thee saying. Go ahead. Saying, let us go after other gods which thou hast not known. And let us serve them. You know what they do? Once that sign or wonder come to pass, they convince you. Let's go on back to church. Put Caesar back on the, put Caesar on the screen. Let's go on to Caesar. Bogia. They won't say that, but they'll say Jesus. Let's go worship Jesus. Come on to my church, whether Baptist, Mormon, Episcopalian, or Anglican. See that dream or that vision I, I had towards you? That's from the Lord. This is the Lord I'm talking about. Let's go worship him. Now let's go on back. Read on. What verse you at? Verse 3. Verse three. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. <laughs> Read. Or that dreamer of dreams. One more time. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. Or that dreamer of dreams. Why not? Why not? For the Lord your God proveth you. He's testing you. God is testing you. Go ahead. To know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Read. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments. See, if the dream or the vision that comes to pass, they're trying to get you to go against God's commandments, that's how you know it's false. It's not of the Lord. God is testing you. He's proving you. Read. And obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Read. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Under Moses' law, he's, he or she was to be put to death. Go ahead. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your Many God. Many of you often ask the question, well, why did God do this? Because what the brother or the sister said in their vision or their dream came to pass. It's a test, dummy. Have you not been reading your four chapters a day? Study, pray, apply. You've been warned. If, if you've been reading four chapters a day, you came across this. 
You had to come across Deuteronomy 13. The Lord is proving you, meaning he's testing you to see whether you're going to keep his commandments or not. Your mama had a dream, your, your bishop or your priest or whoever it is had a dream about you or a vision, and the job came. The money came. The marriage came. Or the baby came. Then they say, because some of them women can't get pregnant, they say, you're going to get pregnant next month, the 14th day of November. Boop, now she's pregnant. All that, the Lord allowed all that to happen because now they say, come on to church. Come on, worship white Jesus. You ain't got to keep no law. And you go, okay. You have just failed the test. You've just failed. Now it's hellfire for your black behind. But what did I do? Read on. Which brought you? But where are you at? Middle of verse 5. Can you read verse 5? Come on, man. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage mm -hmm. to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. So their whole objective was to get you to worship a false God. Read. If thy brother... Now listen good to this. What we're reading in this verse goes with Matthew 18 and 8 and Matthew 5 about your hand and your foot. Read. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul... See that part right there? Which is as thine own soul. It's as if they're a part of you. You grew up with them. You love them so intensely... It's as if they're a part of you, like an eye, like a hand, like a foot. Read it again, the whole verse. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Mm. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this among you. So y'all see that. Now, a verse 6 again. If your brother... The son of your mother or your son. I want you women to read that part right there. Or thy son or thy daughter. Some of the, believe it or not, some people have left the truth at behest of their children. Mommy, daddy, I don't want to be here. And then mommy and daddy, out of love for that child, has left the truth. True stories. We have a million stories. And they're all various and different. So again, if your brother, the son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, watch this, or the wife of thy bosom. You know how many stories we get about some of you brothers? You get married. We, there is a, there's a recent story now. A brother, he's an officer here in New York, speaking up on behalf of a rebellious girl that was just put out, saying that you guys were wrong and judged her incorrectly. So I always say this. One thing, oh, you brothers can be strong, strong, strong. But when you get married, the real you will come out. We say he was always a simp. He just put, it, he just put on a good show. But get married to a woman that you just love beyond God. The real simp nature is going to come out of you. It's going to seep through your pores. And you stand up for wickedness like you have never believed. Like I tell you a story. In Florida, one of our beloved schools, the sister says to her husband in, in Creole, the scripture says, uh, um, the woman shall not wear what man wears. Can you say it in Creole for me? 
Oh, come on, you say in the creel. Come on, man. So then she says, well, I got a spandex dress. Men don't wear this. Can you say in the creel for me? What you just said? She said, I got a spandex dress. Men don't wear this. He goes, I love you so much, babe. You're right. Say it in Creole. <laughs> Say it in Creole. So what ends up happening? She walked her $5.99 behind in the school with a spandex dress. You know what spandex does to a woman's behind? And and it's so tight, her feet can't but go but so far in front of each other. That's how tight the damn dress was. And the captain, they said, what the hell do y'all think y'all doing? And the stupid simp brother, husband, will you know the Lord did not say my wife can it with that this? <laughs> and I thank God the captain threw both of them out that night. Throw their behind out. Some of you men, the real simp will come out in time when you get married. So where are we at? Verse 6 hey, again, if you're... Hey, yes. hey Bishop, that's yes. them VOG brothers. Yes, sir. You know, VOG brothers is brothers that put vagina over God. Mm, that's mm, you mm, brothers mm. right there, VOG. Vagina. VOG? I thought it was P-O-G. Nah, I just didn't want to use the P, you know. Oh, okay, means. okay. So I had to switch it up. <laughs> you know, they be like, they know they know we go crazy, like, yo, they can crazy. Nah, VOG, vagina over God. Brothers, mm-hmm. we not to put vagina over God. Exactly. So again, in verse 6, it says, your brother... The son of thy mother, or the son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend. Some of you come in here for friendship. Your friend fall out the truth, you fall out with him. You simple as hell. Okay? Every man was called in this truth alone. You were born alone. You're going to die alone. You can't take it with you. Okay? So... Your friend, which is uh, as thine own soul, entices thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods. Now, they won't necessarily say, let's serve other gods, those words per se. But they'll say, hey, let's go commit adultery. I know the God you serve says thou shalt not commit adultery. But my God says thou shalt commit adultery. That's what Matthew 5 was talking about, going to commit adultery. It's a cut off, pluck your eye out. Cut your hand off, cut your foot off. Why? Because they are as your soul. Everybody understand that? All right, all right. From there, Jeremiah 20 and 10. The book of Jeremiah. And some of y'all are scared to cut some of these wicked kids off. Cut them off. Cut them off because they're going to lead you down the rabbit's hole of sin. Some of y'all are scared to cut the, the wicked wife off or the wicked husband. Y'all simple as hell. They're leading you into sin. Okay? That's why Christ, hey, we're going to read in a minute, but Jeremiah 20 and 10. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 10. For I heard the defaming of many. Fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report. All my familiars. All my familiars. All my family members. All my kinsmen. All my friends. That's familiars. Go ahead. Read again. All. All my familiars watched for my halting. Watch for me to fall. They hate God's laws. They're all watching for my falling. Go ahead. Saying, peradventure, he will be enticed. Hey, hopefully that nigga will be enticed by the big butt uh, woman over there. Go ahead. And we shall prevail against him. We shall prevail against him. And we shall take our revenge on him. Why revenge? Because they hated God's law. From there, Matthew 10, 34. The book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Mm -hmm. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. God's laws in Christ will set at variance a man against his father. Go ahead. And the daughter against her mother. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. See that a man's foes shall be they of his own household. 
household. Your enemies will be in your house first and foremost. Go ahead. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. That's what Moses was warning us about. I hope everybody's, that's what Moses warned us about. Go ahead. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Some of y'all go out of your way to uh, get your rebellious children from a rebellious wife because you want full custody. And then when you get that child back, that child says to you, I don't want to keep no damn commandments. I want to whore myself out. I want to hang in the streets. Now you stuck. That's talking about you men. You stuck because you love that child so much. And it was a rebellious child, a hateful child. You women, the same with y'all. Go ahead. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. If you ain't worthy to put your life on the line to die, Christ said you're not worthy to be his disciple. What verse was that? In the verse 38, sir. Go ahead. He that findeth his life shall lose it. You try to find your life. Oh, I want to get my family back. I, I, know they he, I know they hate God, but I want to get them all back. I'm going to leave the commandments out of love for my wicked kids or my wicked wife or my wicked husband or my wicked kids. Go ahead. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. If you lose your life, that means you all, they're all cut off. The wicked wife is gone. The wicked kids that's trying to get you to sin, the wicked husband, the wicked friends that's trying to get you to sin. Everybody understand that? Read it again, read it again, read it again. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. So lose your life. Be willing to put your, it goes so far as you're willing to sacrifice your life in your faith for this truth. Everybody understand that? Micah 75. Micah chapter 7 and verse 5. The book of Micah chapter 7 and verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Why? Because sometimes your friend can go off. A guide can go off. There's always that possibility to stumble in this truth, to fall in this truth. That's why you don't put your 100% trust in somebody. Go ahead. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. And you don't put all your trust in a woman that lies on your bosom. Samson did it, and look what happened to him. It didn't go well for Samson. It ain't, brothers, it ain't going to go well for you either. Tell, I'm going to tell my wife everything. You simple as hell. Go ahead. For the son dishonoreth the father. See that? And some of you just love them kids so much, your own kids disrespect you. Read it again. For the son dishonoreth the father. Mm -hmm. The daughter riseth up against her mother. Some of you women are going through that. They know their daughter can't stand them. Go ahead. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. A man's enemies are the men of his own household. That's the same thing Christ said in Matthew 10, 36. Go ahead. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. Mm. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O oh, mine enemy. Now that O oh, my enemy, uh, jump back up. Jump back up. What verse was that? Mm, the bottom of verse 6. A man's, a man's enemies. A man's enemies are the men of his own household. Now verse 8. Verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O oh, mine enemy. So a lot of times we'll read that and say, oh, that's the other nations. Mm -mm. This talk about the people in your house who hate God and they hate you for loving God. Go ahead. When I fall, I shall arise. See, why is it when I fall? Because they're waiting for you to fall. And when you fall and stumble in this truth, they're mocking you. But it says here, when I fall, I shall arise. Go ahead. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Watch this. Come on. I will bear the indignation of the Lord mm -hmm. because I have sinned against him. We know whatever we do against God's law, we're going to suffer for it, but we know the Lord is merciful. Go ahead. Until he plead my cause uh -huh. and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Watch this. Here it come. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it. Then she, that's your wife, that's your wife. That's your wife. Read it again. Then she 
that is mine enemy shall see it. Because she always wanted, she hated the commandments. And when she fell, she wanted you dead. But you rose up. You repented. And it says, then she that is mine enemy shall see it. Go ahead. And shame shall cover her. And shame shall cover her. Which said unto me, where is the Lord thy God? The same thing Job's wife said. When your wife says, where is the Lord your God? Keeping no damn commandments. Go ahead. Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the street. God says, don't worry. I got her. Her judgment is death. I'm going to kill her in time. I need you men to understand it. I need you simp brothers out there. Oh, my wife is angry with me because I can't go to hell with her black ass behind. That's right. I'm telling you. The Lord is telling you he's going to kill her. If these women, not these lovely women here, of course. If these women can't get their act together, God says, don't worry about it. I'm going to kill her. I hope you understand this is what the Bible says. Isn't it what I said? This is what the Bible says. All right, then. Those men and women, those men and women that entice you to sin, they're part of this world. They are part of this world. Give me Sirach 27 and 12. And they don't want to be woken up to God's light. They don't want to come out of darkness into the marvelous light. They will fight you. They will kick you. They will, they will call the police on you for trying to get them to keep God's commandments. Read that for me, Sirach, tw Ecclesiasticus 27 and verse 12. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27 and verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet, if brothers, sisters, if you be among the indiscreet, observe the time. You better check your watch. Check your cell phone. What time is it? Go ahead. But be continually among men of understanding. But be continually among men of understanding. Okay. Yeah, put that on the screen. If you're around the indiscreet, that's men and women who don't keep the commandments, observe the time. What time is it? Oh, I've been with you two minutes. I got to go. I guess you better make up something. I got something to do. It ain't a lie. You do got something to do, like repent. <laughs> you better leave them. Give me Ephesians 5.11. So these are the type of folks you need to cut off. Ephesians 5.11. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, in verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Now you see that word fellowship. That means friendship. Friendship. Y'all going to the bar together. You hanging out at each other's house. Have no fellowship. Go ahead. But rather reprove Read it again. Them. Read it again. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Mm -hmm. But rather reprove them. Rather correct them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You know some of the things they do in secret. Some of the vile filth, threesomes and foursomes, uh, wife swapping. Oh, speaking of wife swapping, we had that situation. I said, it ain't a story we can't tell. I, we ain't ashamed that we're going to tell you the story in one of our illustrious camps. I'm pointing on that side of the room. It always begins here. Not these women right here, though. Not these women. But. Do I want to name the school? No, I don't want to name the school. Sister says, oh, I want to get together with the sisterhood. We're friends. We, I just love the sisterhood. I know I don't sound like a woman, but. <laughs> oh, we're just friends. So the sister, Sister A and Sister B. Uh, sister B says, hey, what's your man like? Because my man likes such and such. So they talk about what each of their men like. So then, one month go by, two months go by of that type of a conversation. And all of a sudden, one of the sisters says, how about we switch? Now, that should have been a red flag. But the sister says, okay. <laughs> and they convinced one husband. The other husband was down for it already because that's what they did in the world. But the other husband says, he's reluctant at first, but then he does it. They switch partners. All in bed at the same time. Four people in one bed. I lie not. You'd be shocked at the things that have occurred. You know where to throw them niggas out. Anyway, 
Give me James 4 and 4. Y'all know the story. Yeah, yeah, because this is the thing. Imagine you are wrong, the, you are wrong that person that's the unfruitful work of darkness. You know, all the dude talking about, yeah, man, we banged this chick yesterday, man, me and my man's run a train, and you are wrong that person all the time. What you think going to end up happening? You're going to be seduced. You understand? That's how a lot of you brothers end up back in the world. You be hanging around the wrong people, okay? You hang around five dummies, you're going to be the sixth. You hang around, sisters, you hang around five hoes, you're going to be the sixth hole. I'm not a hoe, I just hang around them. You simple as hell. James 4 and 4. The book of James, chapter 4 and verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world. Yeah, whosoever will be a friend of the world. Is the enemy of God. Is the what? Enemy of God. Is the enemy. So, sisters. I get, I get these little, and I don't know how to work Twitter too much, but um, I get the little messages on Twitter pop up. Uh, I got some friends in the world. Is it okay if I hang out with them? Sisters, when I get messages like that, I don't respond. I ignore you because I, I know some of you have been with us a year. If you've been with us a year, you can't be that stupid. I refuse to believe that you sisters are that freaking stupid to ask me, can you hang out with friends in the world that you know are whores, drug dealers, drug users? I'm not going to respond. I'm just going to go delete. That's what I do. So don't waste your time sending me those types of messages, okay? Uh, Lava, talk. Say something to clever real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know behind what you just said, Bishop, it's just a test. You remember you say, your God is proving you, right? Yes. So all these friends you once left, these spirits come back. They come back to test you to see if you really about what you say you stand by. You got to understand, even though amongst sisters, amongst brothers, dad got these demons on them as well. Be very mindful. You're not right. in a wrong house like Bishop just tell you. How about the sister that married that's introduced by another couple? Now, where they at? Back in the world. So right. be very mindful. These things are tests. The Lord there to prove each one of us to see if we believe this truth. Right. Because, you know, when I repented, I literally cut everybody off. My, for my family, nobody wasn't seeing me. For a couple of years, I was in incon incognito. Nobody see me. <laughs> you know what I mean? All my friends, years later, they see me show up. They're like, yo, where you was? Da, 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 da. Then they start seeing me on the street teaching, and then they understood. But I, cut, I had to cut everybody off. That's part of being born again. Okay, that's part of change. Okay, don't when you see them again, know you could be that example to them and try to bring them into the truth and show them the scriptures. You all understand what I'm saying? But you cannot be around them, and you sit down there to listening to evil and, you know, all right? But I hope you all understand, otherwise you're going to fall. Yeah, you notice in the world, right? That you notice the friends you have in the world, right? When you left them, they was not doing good. Soon you start to keep this Bible, Satan is blessing them. Mm -hmm. You keep calling them and say, yeah, look what I got now. You know, my church, the new church I go into. Yeah, I mean, all these things are signs to get you uh, to come in their side. But you're so foolish, you're not knowing that you cannot hang with works of darkness. They are dark. It's darkness. Because you don't see it at home, that's not darkness there. But because, like Jeremiah said, do not trim your way to be loved. Hey, and you know what? I, it just popped in my mind as y'all were talking. I don't know what's wrong with some LGBT community people. They really think they're fooling people when they try to... That's it. That's it. We in a hotel. Not with them, but brothers... We're in old town, and there's a, a LGBT dude talking about, what do you want for dinner? What the hell is this? Play the sound, play the sound. <laughs> you ain't fooling nobody. You a transformer. <laughs> you are not a woman. The hell is it? More than meets the eye. <laughs> the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> These people are crazy. They want you to join in their delusion. <laughs> join me in my fantasy world. Join me. Call me her. Use my pronoun. <laughs> That's right. You a transformer. Where we at? So to be a part of this world means to be an enemy of God. First John two fifteen. The 
the book of First John, chapter 2 and verse 15. Love not the world. Read it again. Love not the world. Love not the world, brothers and sisters. Neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things that are in the world, like that rap music some of y'all still listen to. All that worldly stuff some of y'all still involved in. Don't love it, gut. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is not in you. Give me John 17 and 9. I, yeah, it is hard, but that's why repenting is a daily thing. And we got to study, pray, apply daily. The book of John, chapter 17 and verse 9. I pray for them. Christ said, I pray for them. That's the 12. Go ahead. I pray not for the world. He said, I don't pray for the world. Okay, meaning I'm Israelites that's outside. He said, I'm not praying for them. Go ahead. But for them which thou hast given me. But for them which thou hast given me. That was the twelve first and foremost and those disciples at the time. Go ahead. For they are thine. For they are thine. And all mine are thine. And all mine, meaning my disciples, are thine. Go ahead. And thine are mine. Mm -hmm. And I am glorified in them. Read. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name. Letting you know the Father and the Son are two different powers. Go ahead. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. See, see that? That they may be one as we are, meaning on one accord, in agreement. Everybody understand that? It ain't talking about one person. He said that they may be one as we are one, meaning in accord, one accord. Go ahead. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Mm -hmm. Those that thou gavest me, I kept, and none of them is lost. But the son of perdition. That's Judas Iscariot. He was the son of perdition, the betrayer. Go ahead. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Come on. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath Hated them. See that I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. When you get into this Bible and start applying this Bible, expect to be hated. Expect. To be hated. That's what we read at the beginning about the ADL. That they hate our people that are in the scriptures. They ain't worried about Christians. Christians are under delusion. But the Israelites, they hate our guts. And they push uh, the term hate group on us. No, when in reality, they're the hate group. Read. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world. We are not of this world. Go ahead. Even as I am not of the world. Come on. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Mm -hmm. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. See that? They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So the what? So when he says love not the world, he's talking about the evil here. You know? Exactly. Yeah, it go deeper. He's talking about men and women. Because mm -hmm. the world is what it is. It's talking about men and women that live in the world. They are evil. That's what God wants us to understand. Yep. Jump down to verse uh, 20. Watch this. Verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone. I'm not just praying for the 12 disciples and these disciples that are with them. Go ahead. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's for us today. That's us, you and me today. Go ahead. That they all may be one. That they all may be one, meaning perfectly joined in unity. One mind. One mind. Go ahead. And thou, Father, art in me, mm -hmm. and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. From there. Give me Luke 16. Do I want Luke 16? It's, yeah, give me Luke 16. And let's start at verse 1. Wait, let me look at it first. Mm, let me read. I'm, read, I'm looking at it. Bear with me a second. Mm. Hey, what we just read there when Christ says, let them all be one, like I am one, okay, that also showing that the 12 going to have one mind, and they're going to also, also always be together. 
Yeah. Just went in fire mode there for you a quick second. You just went in fire mode? <laughs> I just went to fire mode there for a minute. Hope you all, you know what I mean? They will always be together. Jump down in Luke 16. Let's jump down for time's sake. Verse 9. The book of Luke, chapter 16 and verse 9. Now, now, this goes with, remember we just discussed cutting family members off, friends off that cause you to do what? Sin. Sin. Go ahead. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. So now it seems like a contradiction. Christ is telling us to make friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Hey, can we look up the word mammon? Because we might know what that word is. Can we look that up, IT department? Mammon definition, please. And put it on the screen. Read that. Mammon. Wealth regarded as an evil influence or false object of worship and devotion. It was taken by medieval writers as the name of the devil of covetousness and revived in this sense by Milton. Hey, click that one that says, what is mammon in the Bible? I mean, that one was okay. But let me click that. Read that. Mammon, biblical term for riches often used to describe the debasing influence of material wealth. Okay, so now. Back to verse 9 again, Luke 16, 9. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. That's people that is in the world, they don't believe the truth, right? That when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Now, from there, look at, here's a precept. Give me the rock, Ecclesiastes 3.31. The book of Ecclesiastes. when you read Luke 16, because we didn't read the parable, but it's talking about an unjust steward that dealt unwisely and got fired from his job, and he had to deal right for people to help him. That's what verse 1 through 8 is about. So verse 9, Christ says, make friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Here's the precept to understanding why in Ecclesiastes 3.31. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 31. And he that requiteth good turns is mindful of that which may come hereafter. And when he falleth, he shall find a stay. When you fall, you shall find, find help. So if you deal right on your job with people, when you need help, they will help you. Everybody understand that? But if you're on your job acting like a nucker, when you need help, nobody going to help you. Everybody understand that? So it, now, when you show. get... Yes. So, so we can't be cursing out the white man, the white man, the devil on the job and no, so forth? No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. So, Luke 16. We read Ecclesiastes 3. Don't get trapped serving this world for money. Luke 16, 13. Jump down to verse 13. The book of Luke, chapter 16 and verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So serving mammon means you've got that covetous spirit. Everything you do is about money. He said you can't serve two gods. When you're serving mammon, meaning riches, that's your God. Okay? He said you can't serve two masters. You've got to love one and hate the other. Make your choice. Everybody understand that? So I'm just jumping through these things just for time's sake. I'm jumping through for time's sake. Give me Ecclesiastes 38, 33, and 34. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38 and verse 33. They shall not be sought for in public counsel. This is for you brothers who put your job ahead of God's work. Read it again. They shall not be sought for in public council, mm -hmm. nor sit in high in the congregation. You won't sit high in the congregation. Don't look for rank. If your job is your first priority, go ahead. They shall not sit on the judge's seat, nor understand the sentence of judgment. And don't ask why you don't understand certain judgments. Because you've not been around. You've not studied. You've not prayed nor applied. But you've gone to work, sun up to sundown, every day on the day. Go ahead. They cannot declare justice and judgment, mm -hmm. and they shall not be found where parables are spoken. When we're going over parables, you're nowhere around. Go ahead. 
But they will maintain the state of the world. Your whole life is maintaining the United States of America. That's your whole life. And you brothers know who you are. Go ahead. And all their desire is in the work of their craft. All your desire is the work of your craft. Is that it? Yes, sir. All right, all right. Now we're going to talk about Lazarus and a lake of fire. But before we talk about Lazarus and a lake of fire, I got to give you some scriptures to lead up to that. Give me Isaiah 22, 22. The book of Isaiah, chapter 22 and verse 22. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. So when you read this chapter, it's talking about a guy named, a servant named Eliakim. Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, is symbolic for Christ. Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, is symbolic for the coming Messiah whom the world calls Christ. As a matter of fact, let's read down from 20. Verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle, and I will commit thy government into his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. See that part? And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. This is Christ, okay? And why does it say the house of David? Because it's referring to what, brothers? The 12 tribes of Israel. That's the house of David. Does everybody understand that? It's not talking about the Edomites. The house of David ain't talking about the Philistines. Everybody understand that? I need y'all to understand what the house of David is talking about. The 12 tribes of Israel. Hey, as a matter of fact, give me the precept. I believe it's Acts 15. It might be verse 15. I'm guessing somewhere around there. About the house of David. Of the tabernacles of David. That one. You got it? Is it Acts 15, 15? 15, 16, go ahead. The book of Acts chapter 15 and verse 16. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David. The tabernacle of David is the house of David. That's the 12 tribes of Israel. Everybody understand that? This is making reference to Cornelius and his kinsfolk and friends repenting. He was bringing back northern kingdom with Judah, he was bringing back the 12 tribes again. That's what the whole chapter is about from Acts 10. Christianity didn't figure that thing out yet. Read it again. After this, I will return, and I will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. All right, so from there, from there, from there, give me Revelation 3 and 7. So Christ is the one that has the key of David. Revelation 3 and 7. The Watch book this. of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee. So what I want you to see is that Christ, he has the key of David. That's the uniting of the 12 tribes of Israel. He's the one that opens understanding or shuts understanding, okay? He's the one that shuts and no man can open it. Once you're out, you out in this truth. God said, you know, I'm not dealing with you. No, like Judas, there was no coming back for him. Okay, read. I know thy works. Uh -huh. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. The open door is for us to repent. Go ahead. And no man can shut it. No man can shut it. I don't care how much miss, missile technology Esau got. He cannot shut the door from us repenting. Go ahead. For thou hast a little strength. The little strength is the word of God, the Bible. Go ahead. And has kept my word. We are to keep his word. And has not denied my name. We are not to, to deny the son of God. Go ahead. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. 
which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Okay, let's get a Lord a hand for that thing right there. That's right. Can't no man shut that down. You got nations that we going to shut that down. The Lord said, I open and I shut. You can't stop this. The hell is this? From there, give me Luke eleven fifty two. Luke eleven fifty two. The Book of Luke, chapter eleven and verse fifty two. Woe unto you, lawyers! The lawyers were the Levites that followed the scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. Go ahead. For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. See what the key of David is? You have taken away the key of knowledge. Go ahead. Ye entered not in yourselves. You ain't coming into New Jerusalem. And them that were entering in, ye hindered. You offended them. You taught lies to keep them from repenting. He said, y'all ain't, ain't getting, you ain't getting into New Jerusalem, kingdom of heaven on earth. You ain't getting in. So what I want you to see is the key of David is the key of knowledge. Remember in Hosea 4 and 6, he said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. knowledge. Okay, from there, we're going to talk about death. We're going to talk about death. Now I'm getting into the topic now. Job 3.11. Let's go to Job 3.11. The book of Job, chapter 3 and verse 11. Mm-hmm. Why died I not from thy womb? Why died I not from the womb? Why didn't I die as a baby? Go ahead. Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did not I die when I was born? Go ahead. What Why? Job is saying is called, he caught hell. So he's upset. Go ahead. Why did the knees prevent me? Mm-hmm. Why oh, did my what? mama's knees prevent me? You know how your mama bounced you on the knees as a baby? To keep you up and keep you going? Go ahead. Or why the breast that I should suck? Why was she giving me her breast to, nus- to uh, uh, what's the word? To feed me, breastfeed me, nurture me. Thank you, God. For now, should I have lain still and been quiet? If my mama didn't do that, I would have been laid still and dead. Good. I should have slept. I should have what? I should have slept. Read. Then had I been at rest. If I died, I would have been at rest, Job says. Come on. With kings, with kings and counselors, and counselors of the earth, mm-hmm. which built desolate places for themselves. Come on, or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver, or as a hidden, untimely birth. That's stillborn deaths. I had not been. Why did not be like that? Go ahead. As infants which never saw light. As infants which never saw light. Go ahead. There, the there, w- there when you're dead. There, the wicked cease from troubling. The wicked cease from troubling people. Go ahead. And there, the weary be at rest. And there, the weary are at rest. Go ahead. There, the prisoners rest together. There, in the grave, the prisoners rest together. Go ahead. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. There's no oppressor when you're dead. Go ahead. The small and great are there. The small of the nations are there and the greatest of the nations are there. And the servant is free from his master. And the servant is free from his master. So what I want you to see, Job is explaining death. When you die, your soul, your spirit is at rest. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So you're not being thrown in the middle of the earth. and ah, Satan's going, gotcha now, nigga. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Poking you with a pitchfork. But, but, when Christ comes, Give me Revelation 1 and 8. 118. Revelation 118. This is what we have to be mindful of the second coming. There's a lot of things that's going to happen when Christ returns. The book, the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Do y'all see what Christ said? He said, and I have the keys of hell and of death. Let you know it's about two different things there. Hell and death. Remember at the beginning of the lesson where we talked about if you don't cut them off, you're going to be cast into hell and hell fire, everlasting fire. Did y'all forget already? Okay. Remember I told you, highlight that. Hell, hell fire, everlasting fire. 
Christ says here, and have the keys of hell and death. Remember what he said earlier. He said, what I open, can no man shut it. What I shut, can no man open. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Give me, what do I want? What do I want? I've got a scripture there, but I think there's something else I want it, and it just popped out of my mind. But give me 2 Ezra chapter 9. 2 Ezra 9 and 7. Oh, you know what I want? I just thought about it. Daniel. I want Daniel 12 and 2. That's what I want before second Ezra. Dan, pay close attention. Daniel 12, 1 and 2. Pay close attention. Pay close attention. Pay close attention. The book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1. We're talking about the second coming. Remember Christ said, I have the keys of hell and death. What do you mean by that? Read. And at that time, Shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people? Michael stands for the Israelites. He don't stand for all nations. He only stands for the children of thy people. Go ahead. And there shall be a time of trouble. And there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Now let's pause there and think about that a second. What could he be talking about? He's talking about war like you've never seen. Hold that. Uh, Kylo, give me Zechariah 13 and 8, I think. I want the one about the eyes. 14, 12. Thank you. 14, 12. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because there's always been war on this earth, but this type of war has never, ever happened. Read that. The book of Zechariah, chapter 14 and verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. That's only done by a nuclear missile. Go ahead. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Mm, go ahead. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. So that right there. That's what's going to happen in this third world's war when Christ returns. That's what it means, a day of trouble such as has never been. Okay? Now, back to Daniel 12. Daniel. 12 and 1 again. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. Oh, 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 oh. I just thought about it. Give me the precept to Zechariah 14, 12. I want the one, Isaiah, the waster, 54, 16. Here's the precept with that. He didn't talk about missiles in the Bible. Shut up! Talk about everything in the Bible. Even about your horrors behind. Be quiet. A whole a whole about. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 54, and verse 16. Behold, I have created the Smith. The that, Smith there is Oppenheimer. Go ahead. I behold, I have created the Smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. See, then I've created the waster to destroy. That's what Ippenhammer said. Now I'm become deaf, the destroyer of worlds, when he created the atom bomb. Then we read in 2nd Ezra 11 where it said, the end of this, the, your time shall come through them. These are the people that's going to bring about the end of this civilization that we see today. So now when we go back to Daniel 12 and verse 1, one more again. The book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Everyone that shall be found written in the book of life. Go ahead. And many of them that... Here comes, and many of them... And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Now, we know our spirits don't stay in the ground. Hey, real quick, it just popped in my... Give me the one in Ecclesiastes that says, Who knoweth the spirit of man? 319? Is it Ecclesiastes 3.19? Look at it. Ecclesiastes. Is that it? Come on, read it. 3.21. 
The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? So when we go back to Daniel 12, verse 2 again. Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So now, we know where our spirits is not in the earth. We go up before the Lord. Now remember when Samuel died and the witch said, um, bring me, no, the King Saul said to the witch, summon Samuel. Tell me what you see. She said, I see God's ascending. Do y'all remember that? Nobody know what I'm talking about. Give me the scripture because the guy's here in the front looking at me like, huh? I don't know what's going on here. I think Bishop making stuff up. 1 Samuel 28. That's why I need y'all to study, pray, apply. Where we going? 28.13. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 28 and verse 13. Wait, let me get it. I'm slow. Yes, sir. I wear glasses and I'm old. 28.13, go ahead. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God ascending out of the earth. Ascending, ascending, ascending out of the earth. Who knows the spirit of man that goeth upward? That's what we just read in Ecclesiastes, right? Yes, sir. Everybody familiar? Everybody with me right there? Yep. All right. So let's go back to Daniel 12 and 2. This the is Malachi mode. <laughs> go ahead, read that. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So now we understand that this is in the heavens. We're waking from the dust of the earth is referring, is symbolic for the heavenly realm. We're where, that's where our souls rest. Everybody understand? Go ahead. Some to everlasting life. Some of us are going to be waking up to everlasting life. That's the resurrection of the dead. Go ahead. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Some souls are going to be awakened to shame and everlasting contempt. Hmm. Give me John 5.29 real quick. Let me look at it. That everlasting contempt. The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 29. Pay very close attention. And shall come forth... They that have done good. Start at 28. Verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Everybody that died going to hear the Lord's voice. Go ahead. And shall come forth. And shall come forth. Go ahead. They that have done good. They that have done good, men kept God's commandments. Unto the resurrection of life. Unto the resurrection of life. But watch this. And they that have done evil. Like your mama and your daddy. Unto the resurrection of damnation. Of what? Of damnation. Damnation. Damn. Yo, where the bombs at, man? Where the bombs at, man? What's going on, man? Come on. You see, Bishop ain't even got to transform. He always in the mode. You know what I mean? Yo, so just read it again. I just gained chills in my you know, while I'm hearing that. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. In the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Mm, 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 mm. We ain't get a bomb yet. That's New York back there, but it's all right. It's all right. Do you understand what we just read? Okay. So now we read that. I want you to understand. Although right now when we pass away, Christ is not, he has not opened up that yet. We all rest. But when he returns, he said, I'm going to open up. He said, because I got the keys to hell and death. He knows who's going to be for everlasting life and who's destined for contempt and everlasting damnation. Don't be deceived by Israelite camps or churches that say, it don't matter what sin you do. Just say you believe in Yahweh Shai or Jesus, and you're going to be all right. Give me that Matthew 12, 31. 
Don't be deceived. That's all I could warn you. All I could do is warn you. You got camps that spew slander and hatred and they think they're going to get the kingdom. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Uh -huh. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. That's the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is when you know these scriptures and you reject these scriptures. Go ahead. Shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, mm -hmm. it shall be forgiven him. Because like Paul, he spoke against Christ. This is what you, you do foolish things, say foolish things before you repent. Go ahead. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost. You learn this gospel, then you reject this gospel. It shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world. Neither in this world. Neither in the world to come. Do y'all see that? Don't be deceived thinking you're going to be wicked as hell and you're going to come back as a baby born in the kingdom. That's a lie from the pits of hell. I'm telling you all right now. Okay? Second Ezra 9 and 7. I still didn't get to Lazarus yet, but we're almost there. We're getting there. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 7. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. His works is the commandments, go ahead. And by faith. And by what? And by faith, whereby ye have believed. Y'all see the part where it says works and faith, works and faith. The precept, one precept, is Revelation 14, 12. Read that for us, please. Here's the precept to works and faith. You got Christians going, no, it's not by works. No, no works, you ain't got. They don't understand what they're saying. They're telling you you can be an adulterer, a homosexual, a thief and a liar, and a murderer, and still get the kingdom of heaven on earth. All right, read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. See that? Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Let's go back to 2 Ezra 9 and 7 again. Second Esther, chapter 9 and verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, Read. shall be preserved from the said peril. Shall be preserved from danger, destruction. Go ahead. And shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. That's the wilderness. Go ahead. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Read. Then shall they be in pitiful case. Who is he talking about? Go ahead. Which now have abused my ways. Which now have abused my ways. Go ahead. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. Shall what? Shall dwell in torment. You shall dwell in torments. Hmm. Go ahead. For such as in their life have received benefits. For such as in your life have received benefits. You got the best job. You make the most money. You're a billionaire, millionaire. You good. Read it again. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And have not known the Lord by keeping his commandments in the faith of Jesus. Go ahead. And they that have loathed my law. See that part right there? And they that have loathed my law, meaning hated my law. While they had yet liberty. While they had yet liberty. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. You despise keeping God's commandments by repentance. Go ahead. The same must know it after death by pain. Ooh, do y'all see that right there? The same must know it after death by pain. That's what Christ was saying. He said, I got the keys of hell and death. Right now, when we die, like brothers died yesterday or last week, they're at rest. They're at rest. And we know that they're going to get everlasting life because why? They were keeping the commandments. That's what we know. But your mamas and daddies, sisters and brothers who was breaking God's law, gave you the finger, hated the Bible, they died. When the Lord returned, they're going to get their contempt and everlasting shame. Everybody understand that? All righty then. Now, Luke 16, 19. I wanted to precept this parable with those scriptures. Luke 16, 19. The book of Luke, chapter 16 and verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen 
and fared sump- sumptuously every day. Put it on the screen. So there was a certain rich man. Keep it on the screen. Give, now, let's see who this rich man is. You know some of your preachers look like that. Yeah, give me a Bible. Give me a Bible. Hey, uh, give me James uh, 1 and 1. We're going to talk about the rich man. James 1 and 1. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greedy. So this letter is addressed to the 12 tribes. Everybody with me there, right? Jump to chapter 5. Still addressed to the 12 tribes, verse 1 and 2. James, chapter 5, verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men. Now he's addressing the rich men of the 12 tribes of Israel. This goes with some of your athletes, your actors, your entertainers. Read it again. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your misery. When he says weep and howl for your misery, he said you better repent. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted. Your riches are corrupted. Go ahead. And your garments are moth-eaten. Mm-hmm. Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And your, and your what? And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. What verse was that? Middle of verse 3, sir. Okay, from there. Let's go back now. Let's go back to Luke 16 and 19. I just wanted to show you that. Because sometimes we read about the rich man, we don't realize Israelites were rich. Some of them, not all of them. Like... Nicodemus, he was rich. Joseph of Arimathea, he was rich. Remember the young man that was rich and Christ said, sell all that you got and give to the poor. He said he he went away sorrowful. Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector, he was rich. Paul was rich at one time. I want you to understand, so these rich men are these type of rich people amongst us that you see today. Everybody understand that? Okay, Luke 16, 19 again. The book of Luke, chapter 16 and verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. So, put it on the screen. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. Here's a precept. Let me help you out. Give me 1 Samuel 2 and 8. A certain beggar. Who is this beggar? Put it back on the screen. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2 and verse 8. He raises up the poor. He raises up the poor. Out of the dust. Out of the dust. And lifteth up the beggar. And lifteth up the beggar. From the dunghill. From the shithole. To sit them among princes. To sit them among princes. That's dung hell means doodle. Y'all know S-H-I-T. Go ahead. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. That precept right there goes with the beggar in Luke 16 and 20. Let's go back to that again. The book of Luke chapter 16 and verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate. Full of sores. Full of sores. Go ahead. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So now, that verse right there, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. That's the little benefits we get in society. Okay? Those are the benefits like we read about in Esdras. It says, uh, moreover, the dogs came And licked his sores. Who are these dogs? Well, the dogs cover two things. Write this down. The dogs are both other nations and wicked Israelites. And I'm going to prove that. Give me uh, Exodus 11 verse 7. About Egypt. Nope. I don't want that one yet. Put it on the screen so I can look at it and I'll tell you what I want. Take that off. Give me the one about Egypt. I want the picture of Exodus 11. And, yep, put that on the screen. Exodus 11 and 7. The book of Exodus, chapter 11 and verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Against man or beast, 
that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So God is calling the Egyptians, what brothers? Dogs. Dogs. Okay. Dogs. Give me Psalms 108 verse 9. Psalms 108 and verse 9. The book of Psalms, chapter 108 and verse 9. Well, this one doesn't say dogs, but I like it anyway. Go ahead. Moab is my wash pot. Damn Chinese. Go ahead. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. You know how you throw your shoe at a dog. If y'all come from down, I don't know what y'all do in the island, but down south we love to throw our shoes at a dog. Because they ain't right. I want trying to sneak in the house and eat somebody's food. <laughs> throw your shoe at them. Read it again. Moab is my wash pot. That's why they're always in the laundromats. Go ahead. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Mm -hmm. Over Philistia will I triumph. Pal Philistia is Palestine. Palestinians. Okay, from there. From there. Give me what I want. What I want. Oh, I did want to say this. A lot of our people who live, we live in America and we're scattered worldwide. And a large proportion of us live on the continent of Africa, okay? Now, remember it said that the dogs licked the sores of Lazarus. That's the, uh, the nations taking our wealth and our riches. Give me that in Revelation 18 real quick. Read that quick for me about the things they got from the continent. I'm just going, I'm just veering to the left just for a second. I just want to show you something. Is it Revelation 18 or Revelation? Yeah, that's it. Uh, start at 11. Revelation 18, start at 11. And let's read down quickly, please. The book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 11. Now, everything that we're about to read, the majority of it, 99.9%, .9 they get from the continent of Africa. Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Mm -hmm. The merchandise of gold. They get that from Africa. And silver. They get that from Africa. And precious stones. They get that from Africa. And of pearl. They get that from Africa. And fine linen. They get that from Africa. And purple. They get that from Africa. And silk. They get that from Africa. And Madagascar to make silk. Go ahead. And scarlet. They get that from Africa. And all thine wood. And all thine wood. They get that from Africa. And all manner vessels of ivory. They got that from Africa. And all manner vessels of most precious wood. They get that from Africa. And of brass. Africa. And iron. Africa. And marble. From Africa. And cinnamon. From Africa. And odors. Odors. And, odors. And odors. Go ahead. And ointment. From Africa. And frankincense. From Africa. And wine. From Africa. And oil. From oil. Africa. And, <laughs> and fine flour. From Africa. And wheat from Africa, and beef from Africa, and sheep from Africa, and horses from Africa, and chariots from Africa, and slaves from Africa, and souls of men from Africa. These are the things they do to our people, the Shemites who live on the continent. They take, these are the dogs that lick the sores. They take, they take, they take from us. Okay? Put the picture up. This is what they do now. When we've been through Ghana, Liberia, Sierra Leone, this is the things you'll see. We'll sit down in a restaurant to eat. You'll always see an Edomite yeah. with our people. And they have deceived our people to thinking they're going to, that they're going to be beneficiaries from a business. They just put the blacks as a, the face over the company. But behind the scenes, it's always the white man. They're the ones reaping all the financial benefits. And they'll give the blacks maybe a dollar more, dollar here, dollar there. And they really, our people really think, thank you, Laba. Thank you. They really think they have made it. And, the, and some of our people, they will curse you, spit at you, look down on you because they are working with the white man. This is what you see on, in the continent of Africa. We saw it in Sierra Leone. Nigeria, the same thing. I am with the white man, my brother. He is God. You are nothing. You are nigga. You are nigga. Okay. All righty then. Give me the next picture. Put on the screen. Yep, put it up. They hired them to work. throughout and All the things we just read about, they hire Africans. Some of them are our people. 
a lot of them are people, and they pay them pennies on the dollar to do the mining and things of that nature. Give me the next one. This is what they do. You see the map of Africa in the back? This is what they mine, 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 okay, for the diamonds in South Africa, the gold in Ghana. Okay, this is what they do. This is what Esau and the nations do. Because it ain't just Esau. It's China doing it too. Arabs doing it too. Give me the next picture. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Give me the next picture. And Esau behind the scenes is filthy rich. They are the dogs. They are the dogs. Watch this. How do you know the white man's a dog? Give me Mark 7. Verse 24, here's more. Another scripture proved that they're the dog that Christ was talking about. Mark 7, let's start at verse 24. The book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into an house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. Christ couldn't be hid. He was so famous. Go ahead. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him. And came and fell at his feet. So she came and fell at the feet of Christ. Can we put it on the screen? Put it on the screen. She came and fell at his feet. Give me the next one. Go ahead. The woman was a Greek. The woman was what? A Greek. She was a Greek. A Syrophoenician by nation. Meaning she was Syrian and lived in Phoenicia. Go ahead. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not meat. It is not good. It is not right. To take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. Cast it to who? Unto the dogs. So Christ, you know, church has never explained that. He's insulting her. He's calling her. And there's an S. He didn't say dog for her. Dogs for her and her people. Her, her daughter, her people. Dogs is plural. Everybody see that? Nobody in Christianity want to stay to go. They go, get ready, get ready. No, 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 no. Let's pause right there and let's talk about this. This loving Jesus called her dogs. Not just her, but her daughter's a dog and her people are dogs. That's the, so your mama a dog. That's what the son of God is saying right there. Now that we all understand that, now we can read on. Go ahead. That, that's what you got to do in the street. Don't let them run by that because they always want to run by that. Read. Verse 28, and she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord. Wait, 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 what did she do? And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's see what she said yes about. Go ahead. Yet the dog, she admitted she's what? Dogs. Her and her people are what? Dogs. Dogs. Y'all try to get the white man to admit that. Try to get the white man to admit that. Listen, listen. <sighs> Read it again. And she answered and said unto him. Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Uh -huh. And he said unto her, for this saying. And that's what you got to stress. For this saying. What saying? That she was a dog. Her and her people are dogs. For this saying. Go ahead. And he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. See that? that nobody want to deal with that. Nobody, no Christian want to deal with that. They want you to keep reading and just run, read on, read quick, read quick. No, we're going to read this slow. We're going to read this slow. So now, give me, give me the next picture. There's a bunch of them. Yeah, you get, yeah, 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 yeah. You can put that on the screen. Yeah, these are dogs. The other nations are dogs. You can give me the next one. And they're all filthy rich off of, hey, think about it. I want you to think about it. We'll have, you have a black community, black or Latino community, right? These nations always set up shop where we live and get all the money they can get from us and then take it back where? To their people. We don't reap the benefits of nothing. This is what the story of Lazarus is about. So now, hey, yes, yeah. Hey, brothers, y'all, I see, I see some Israelites be doing this. None of y'all to do this. Christ called the woman a what? Dog. Is she a dog or her whole nation? Her whole, whole nation. Some brothers, they use that and they say, you see, a dog is a what? So they call her the female B-I-T-C-H. 
You brothers, that's not what we got to use the words in the Bible. Okay? She's a dog. Her child is a dog. Her people are the dog. All the men and them in her nation is dogs. You don't understand? So we got to use the words in the Bible. All right? Don't try to be slick and try to do your own thing talking about, oh, a dog is a B-I-T-C-H. So Christ called her a B-I-T-C-H. No. All right, brothers? All praises. From there. So not only are the other nations dogs, but rich and wicked Israelites are dogs. I'm going to show you that. Isaiah 56 and 10. Isaiah 56 and 10. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 56 and verse 10. His watchmen are blind. The white man has set up watchmen. The watchman he set up is our people as taskmasters, okay? Wait, wait. Let me show you that real quick. Give me John 11. Here's the precept. John 11, 47 and 48. Here's the precept to his watchmen. The book of John, chapter 11 and verse 47. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans. And the, read that again. And the Romans. And the Romans. And the Romans. And the Romans. Shall come and take away both our place and nation. So who set the scribes and Pharisees up in their positions? Romans. Romans. That's, so these Pharisees and Sadducees, these religious leaders, they were the watchmen. Go back to Isaiah 56 now. And 10 one more time. The book of Isaiah, chapter 56 and verse 10. His watchmen are blind. They can't understand. They can't see the scriptures. They are all ignorant. Mm -hmm. They are all dumb dogs. See, they are all dumb dogs. Go ahead. They cannot bark. They can't. A, a dog barking is meant to warn you. Right. These dumb dogs, these Pharisees cannot warn the people of impending doom. Go ahead. Sleeping. Sleeping. Lying down. Lying down. Loving to slumber. They love to slumber. Watch this. Yay, they are greedy dogs. They are greedy dogs. Which can never have enough. Always want money, 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 money. Go ahead. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They're shepherds that can't understand the word of God. They all look to their own way. Go ahead. Everyone for his gain. Everyone for his what? For his gain. For his own gain. Money, 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 money. Go ahead. From his quarter. From his quarter, wherever his church or, uh, is set up. From wherever he at. That's what it means, from his quarter. Give me Psalms 22 and 16. So we see that Christ called them dogs. Here's another one, Psalms 22, 16. The book of Psalms, chapter 22 and verse 16. For dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. See that? So when Christ was on the cross, read it again. For dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just the Romans that was around him. You had the scribes and Pharisees saying, hey, he calls on Elijah. Let's see if they're going to save him. They were making mockery of the Son of God while he was on, not yet, while he was on the cross. Go ahead. They pierced my hands and my feet. See that? They pierced my hands and my feet. That was the Romans. Go ahead. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. Mm -hmm. They part my garments among them mm -hmm. and cast lots upon my vesture. Yeah, jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. The dog that had power at that time were the Romans. Okay. So you had the wicked scribes and Pharisees doing the will of Rome. Okay. So they all fall in that dog category. Okay. So now you may say, what does that got to do with us today? Now put it up on the screen. Today, our people do the bidding of the Christian church. That's what they do. The Vatican, the Protestant Christians, they are dogs. Give me the next picture. All your famous, world-renowned Christian pastors are dogs. Them, their bishops, the deacons, the ushers, the deaconesses, all dogs with their give me 10% of your earnings. All of that. All of them are dogs. Give me, I'm gonna give you some more now. Here's some more precepts on dogs. 
Deuteronomy 23, 17. Hey, Bishop. Yes, sir. Don't forget, don't forget those wicked Israelites today. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those who's one in the mouth is speaking evil against their brothers. They're mm -hmm. also dogs too. Yeah. Because eventually they're going to join with Esau to come against us. That's right. Yes, I'm talking to you. You are a dog. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 23, 17. The book of Deuteronomy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Now watch what Moses calls the whore and the sodomite. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So don't bring the hire of a whore. You make money from a whore. The Lord said, I don't want that money. It says, neither the price of a dog. That's sodomite. You made money off that? Don't bring that money into the temple. Everybody understand that? So it's calling those, those pe our people in them lifestyles dogs. Everybody understand that? All righty. Then give me Revelation 22. No, 2 Peter 2.22. 2 Peter 2.22. We still talk about dogs. And remember, these dogs that we're talking, they feed off of our people. The poor of our people. That's what they do. Second Peter 2.22. The book of Second Peter, chapter 2 and verse 22. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. Let's start above it. Start at 21 so we know what it's talking about. Verse 21. Start at 20, 20, 20. Verse 20. For if after they had escaped the poll sorry. For if after they had escaped the pollutions of the world. Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's you men and women listening now that claim you've repented. They are again entangled therein. You get entangled in your former sins. Go ahead. And overcome. And you get overcome by your former sins. Go ahead. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Read. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it. To turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. You, were, you left the commandments of God. Go ahead. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. Watch what it calls you. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. You're a dog that have returned to your own vomit again. Go ahead. And the sow that was washed to their wallowing in the mire. You're a pig. Revelation 22, 15. Now, we read all these precepts to help us understand the parable of Lazarus. That's all. Revelation twenty-two, fifteen. 15. The book of Revelations, chapter 22 and verse 15. For without our dogs... Wait, wait, read verse 14. Verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. And what else? And may enter in through the gates into the city. The only way you get into the gates of the city, we got to keep what, brothers? The commandments. Read. For without our dogs. Outside New Jerusalem are what? Dogs. Dogs. That's the other nations. Go ahead. And sorcerers. And sorcerers. And whoremongers. Mm -hmm. And murderers. And idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So you ain't getting in. So now let's go on back to Luke 16. Now that we went through those precepts, it helps us understand what Christ is talking about. Luke 16 and 22 again. The book of Luke, chapter 16 and verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Now it came to pass. No, read 21 again. 21, verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Now the beggar dies. Lazarus dies. Go ahead. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom is paradise. Go ahead. The rich man also died and was buried. The rich man also died and was buried. Now, here we go. Read. And in hell. Where? In hell. And where? And in hell. Remember at the beginning of the lesson, it talked about hell being what? What, what, what? Uh, everlasting fire. Remember that. Read it again. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment. Being in what? Torment. In what? Torment. Now, remember that torment comes when who returns? When Christ returns. Go ahead. 
and seeth Abraham afar off. And seeing Abraham afar, put that one on the screen. So you had Abraham and you had Lazarus. Okay, read that verse. Go back up. Go ahead. Go verse back up. I just like these images. I, I just like this stuff. Uh, 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 Abraham and Lazarus. Now give me the next one. The next picture. No. Well, they're not that one yet. Not that one yet. Yeah, that one. So they look across. Where do we read that one at? Uh, what, actually, you know what I want? No, read, read uh, 22 again down. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment. Now put that rich man back up on the screen. The rich man. The rich man in torment. Yeah, that guy. Looking like Al Sharpton, whoever that is. Okay. Now, all this is spiritual. This is spiritual. Because we know once the bombs hit, brothers and sisters, your flesh, what happens to your flesh? It's gone instantly. But you know what stays around? Your spirit. Your spirit. Read. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. And Lazarus is with him. Go ahead. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Go ahead. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. See that I am tormented in this flame. So this flame we know is the spiritual side of it. Because the physical, your flesh is gone already. But your spirit, the real you, that's that ever. Well, remember what we read in Daniel 12? Everlasting shame and contempt. Okay, go ahead. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good wait, things. Wait, who remembers? In the book of Ezra, we said, the Bible said they receive what? Benefits. benefits. They receive benefits. Read that again. But Abraham said, Son, Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. Evil things, poverty, oppression, go ahead. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Now Lazarus, which represents the repentant, is comforted, but you now, now is your turn to be tormented. That's what the same shall know it after death by what? Pain. Pain. Go ahead. And beside all this, between us and you, there was a great gulf fixed. Mm -hmm. There's a great gulf between us. Go ahead. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. He said there's nobody that can get over there to you. This is the spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm, he said, it's not permitted for us to even go to. We can't get there even if we wanted to. Go ahead. Neither can they pass to us. That would come from thence. Neither can you come from there to us. This is all in the spirit realm. Go ahead. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Send Lazarus to my father's house. Go ahead. For I have five brethren, mm -hmm. that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place lest of torment. Lest they also come into this torment. Go ahead. Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses. This is how you know the rich man is Israel. They have who? Moses. They have Moses. And the prophets. And the prophets. Let them hear them. Let them hear what Moses and the prophets said. That's way, that way they could avoid this place. Go ahead. And he said, nay. No, no, Father. Go ahead. And he said, nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. The one rose from the dead. He said, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't even believe if somebody rises from the dead. Everybody understand that? What's the proof of that? Give me John 12. <laughs> Here's the evidence of that. Because some of y'all, even in here, you think if, if your parents see some wonder they're going to believe. No, if they was wicked in the past, they're going to be wicked today. John 12, let's start it. I just want verse for time's sake. Uh, read verse 1, then we'll just jump down for time's sake. The book of John, chapter 12, and verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, 
whom he had raised from the dead. So Christ, remember in history, Christ raised Lazarus from the dead. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. Much people of the Jews, therefore, knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Read. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Do y'all see that? Do y'all see that? They wanted to put Lazarus to death. Go ahead. Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Go ahead. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found, sorry, and Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Sion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not this disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, that they had done these things unto him. The people therefore that was with him when he had called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. So they bear record. So I want y'all to see that when Lazarus was raised from the dead, those same wicked scribes and Pharisees, they plotted and planned to put Lazarus to death. That's why Christ, the Abraham said to the rich man, he said, if they don't believe Moses and the prophets, they won't believe the one rise from the dead. Everybody understand that? Okay, from there, from there, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 12. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 12. That they all might be damned. That they all might be damned. Who this damn goes back to Daniel 12 and 2. Their everlasting contempt and shame, God, that they all might be damned. Who believed not the truth. Who believed not Christ and the commandments. But had pleasure. But in, had pleasure. In unrighteousness. In sin. Everybody see that right there? Everybody see that? Yes, sir. Okay, from there, give me Isaiah 66, 23. Isaiah 66, 23 and 24. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 23. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. Pay close attention. That from one new moon. From one new moon. To another. To another. And from one Sabbath to another. Mm -hmm. Shall all flesh come to worship before me. Say it, the Lord. Everybody's going to be forced to worship the Lord. The whole planet Earth. Go ahead. And they shall go forth. They shall go forth. Talk about the Israelites shall go forth. And look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. Those men that transgressed against that's your mamas, some of your fathers. You transgress God's laws. Go ahead. For their worms shall not die. Uh, when it says their worms shall not die, that's their soul. Their soul, their spirit shall not die. Read that part again. For their worms shall not die, mm -hmm. neither shall their fire be quenched. Neither shall their fire be quenched. Y'all keep playing with this Bible. Go ahead. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. All flesh is going to abhor them. When they, who's that over there? That pe This goes back to what we just read when it said Abraham and Lazarus looked afar off and they saw the rich man. This is the same thing Isaiah is talking about. The same thing. Every, the righteous, we're going to see the wicked. Everybody understand that? Y'all keep playing and listening to some of these foolish Israelites. Stop listening to All I can do is warn you. That's all I could do. So now, Revelation 14. No, 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 no. Mark 9, 42. Mark 9, 42. So, so Bishop, so yes, sir. what we're reading there in Lazarus, that's literal. Like mm -hmm. Abraham going literally see yep. people being tormented. But the goal fix is that they are in the spirit realm being tormented and Abraham is in the kingdom of God with Christ and all they lack and there's nothing they could do. We can't go to the spirit world and bring you alive. You know, so yeah. Exactly. exactly. I hope y'all understand that. Get that. Mark 9, 42. Watch this. The book of Mark, chapter 9 and verse 42. 
And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones. Now we're going back to the offending. That's some of you men and women. You like to offend brothers. You lie. You steal. You bear false witness. You force brothers and sisters to do unscrupulous things. Read it again. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Go kill yourself. Go ahead. And if thy hand offend thee. And if thy hand offend thee. Cut it off. Remember what the hand is? Somebody close to you. Friend, neighbor, mama, father, sister, brother, wife, or husband, child, or daughter. Go ahead. It is better for thee to enter into life main. It's better to enter the kingdom main, meaning without them. Than having two hands to go into hell. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You see how he's describing hell here? Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. This when them bombs hit and Christ come with that fire, there's going to be a realm opened. I want you to understand that. It ain't going to be, oh, I'm just going to die and be born again as a baby. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Go ahead. Where, where, where their worm dieth not. Hey, hey, didn't we just read that in Isaiah 66? Where their worm, that soul, your soul dieth not. Go ahead. And the fire is not quenched. And the fire is not quenched. Go ahead. And if thy foot offend thee, mm -hmm. cut it off. You better cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life. It's better to you to enter without that foot. Go ahead. Than having two feet. Than to, to have your friend or family member with you. To be cast into hell. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Mm -hmm. Where there worms Read it again. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Where their worm, their soul dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Go ahead. And if thine eye offend thee, mm -hmm. pluck it out. Pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And the fire is not quenched. Okay, go ahead. For every one shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. That sacrifice, that's because when the Lord come back, it's going to be a sacrifice. He's going to kill a whole lot of people, like it says in Isaiah 66, 15. We're going to say a lot of you. Yeah, you notice that that mentioned the body parts, right? Mm -hmm. These things hurt. If I were to take your arm, it's going to feel pain. Yes. That's what the Lord said. Some of you are going to give in to this thing. You understand? You're going to give in. Then guess what? Going to wait for your day at the end. Hellfire. It's plain. Hellfire. Revelation 14 and 9 now. Watch this. Pay close attention. I'm not hallucinating. I'm not imagining. It's what the Bible is saying. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, Start saying... At verse 8. Start at verse 8. Verse 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen. That's America. Babylon is fallen. Is fallen. Is fallen. That great city. That great city, the United States of America. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Mm -hmm. Her sins. Go ahead. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast, if any man worship the white man, and his image, and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, that's sin, go ahead, or in his hand, you support that sin, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. You're going to drink of the wine of the wrath of God, go ahead, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire. He shall what? And he shall be tormented with fire. So I'm not making up. This is what the Bible is saying. Go ahead. And brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. This is how you know it's the spirit realm. In the presence of the holy angels. And in the presence of the Lamb. And in the presence of Christ, the Son of God. Go ahead. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night. Who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. That's the same thing we read. And go back to, hold this, we're coming right back here. Go back to 2 Thessalonians. When it talks about 
You worship the beast, his image. You receive his mark in your hand or your forehead. Go back to 2 Thessalonians 2.12. We just read it. It just used different words, but it's talking about the same thing. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. What, are your, what is unrighteousness, brothers? Sin. Sin. Go ahead. But we are bound to give thanks always to God. So now that's all I want to go back to Revelation 14 again. Now notice up at verse 8, Revelation 14 and 8. Go ahead. Read it again. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So that's talking about this place falling. Look at verse 11. Verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. Meaning here in this place, the smoke of the torment here, y'all can put it on the screen, shall go up forever and ever, meaning a very long time. The precept is Isaiah 34. Go to Isaiah 34 and 10. Actually, let's start at verse 4. And we're going to read down to 10. The book of I want verse 4 because at the beginning of the lesson, we talked about Idumia, Edom. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. This is World War Three, Armageddon, the return of the king. Go ahead. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And the heavens shall be rolled. Y'all got a scroll up there for us? That's it right there. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Go ahead. And all their hosts shall fall down. All their hosts, meaning the satellites, the missiles, everything that's up, they're going to fall. Go ahead. As the leaf falleth off from the vine. As the leaf falleth off from the vine. And as a falling fig from the fig tree. Read. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Now this is Christ. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down. I, sorry. Behold, it shall come down. I, upon I do me. All right, just read it again. You got a problem with the white man, but let's just read it. Yes, we know inside there's a Christian sitting there. You got to rebuke that in the name of the Lord. Read boy verse no five way, one boy. more again. Boy, ain't no way, boy. All right. Book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verse five. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon I do me. Who's I do me, brothers? That's right. Go ahead. And upon the people of my curse. To judgment. Even the white man understood. The scholar we read earlier at the beginning of the lesson, he said this is the white man. Go ahead. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. See that? The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. Go ahead. It is made fat with fatness mm -hmm. and with blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra. Basra was one of the capital cities of Edom. So now what I want you to see is comparing the destruction here to a sacrifice. That's what we read about earlier in today's lesson. Go ahead. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. There's going to be a great slaughter, a sacrifice here. Go ahead. And the unicorn. When it says unicorn, it means rhinoceros. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about nations of men. Go ahead. And the unicorns shall come down with them. And the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood. And their dust made fat with fatness. Why? For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance mm -hmm. and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Who are the Israelites? That's the controversy of Zion. Who does the land of Israel belong to? That's the controversy. Go ahead. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, uh -huh. and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. The land of Idum is talking about Babylon the Great. Go watch this. Here's the proof. Watch this. Read. And what it, the hell is this? It shall not be quenched night nor day. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. Didn't we just read that in Revelation 14? It's saying the same thing. Read it again. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. A long time. Go ahead. From generation to generation, it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Everybody see that? 
Let's go back to Revelation 14, 11 again. So y'all don't forget to train the thought. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Read. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So we got to always remember that that's how we're going to escape. That's our patience. Give me uh, 1 John 5 and 1. 1 John 5 and 1. So y'all keep on playing with these church groups out there. Some of y'all dabbling possibly. I'm just throwing this out there. Some of you dabble with these other Israelite camps that don't know anything. They just watch our videos and give double honors to their elders who don't know anything. Y'all keep dabbling with them. And be convinced it's okay to sin. You can have women here, women there, sex, 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 and kick them to the curb, make whores out of these women. Keep on playing. Give me that, 1 John 5 and 1. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, mm -hmm. and everyone that loveth him, that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of him. I understand that you just read. <laughs> Take your time. Yes, sir. Blow your nose. Do you need a tissue to blow your nose? Get a tissue, blow your nose, wipe your forehead. You need a sip of water over there? You need some water? Thank it's you, sir. getting hot in here. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Bishop. Mm -hmm. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Why? Why are you born of God? Meaning you're born again. Because you understand that following Jesus the Christ, you must keep what? Amen. The commandments. Go ahead. And everyone that loveth him, that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of him. So you love the Father, you love the Son. Go ahead. By this we know that we love the children of God. By this we know that we love the children of God, our brothers, our sisters. Go ahead. When we love God. When we love God. And keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. That's how you know you have the love of God. If y'all ain't doing that, you don't have the love of God in there. on you, sisters. You ain't got the love of God if you ain't doing that. Go ahead. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not grievous. Go ahead. For whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born again. That's what it means. Overcometh the world. That's how we overcome the world, the world of sin. The mark of the beast, okay? The mark in the hand, the forehead, the image of the beast. It's all the world. It's just you. John is just using different words here. He's calling it the world. John called, and John the Revelator, he said, the beast, the image of the beast. He also called it the false prophet, which is the church system. But it's all the world. In Thessalonians, what did Paul call it? Unrighteousness. Everybody understand that? It's the same thing. Each prophet, each apostle is using different terminology. Everybody with me so far? Yes, sir. Read it again, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Indeed, our faith in Christ. Go ahead. Who is he that overcometh the world? Who is he that overcometh the world? Meaning, who is he that overcomes the beast and his image and the mark in his forehead and his name? Who is he? Go ahead. But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. But he that believes. To believe means what? You keep what? Amen. The commandments. That's the only way. That is the only way. From there, jump down to verse 18 for time's sake. Verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God. We know that whosoever is born of God, being born again, sinneth not. Sinneth not. Don't break the commandments willingly. Go ahead. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. Right? You keep this. Meaning what? What is this literally saying? It's literally saying that, because I know some of us do fall at times, but what do we do when we fall? That's right. We repent. That's what he's saying there. Go ahead. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. See that part right there? That's how you know it's talking about the beast, 
the image of the beast, the mark of his name, the uh, mark in the hand. It's all going, it's all, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Isaiah called it, he said the whole world lies, lieth in what? Darkness. Darkness. It's all talking about the same thing. That's what I need you to understand. Go ahead. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. When it says idols, that goes back to the image of the beast. That's idolatry. Put a Caesar on the board. Yeah, put it on the screen. That's what it's talking about right there. That's a form of idolatry. Keep yourself. John said the image of the beast. Here he just uh, here he says idols. Everybody understand? It's talking about the same thing. Don't get bugged out. So right now, Mark chapter Micah four. Micah four. We almost done. We almost done. Micah four. Micah four and ten. We want victory. Is that right, brothers? Yes, sir. We want to overcome. Is that right, brothers? Yes, sir. All righty then. Mark, four, Micah 4 and 10. The book of Micah, chapter 4 and verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. So in this time period, brothers, it's prophesied. We must be in pain and labor to bring forth. And part of that pain means you, you might have to cut some of your loved ones off. Some of your loved ones that's telling you, don't keep the commandments. You might have to cut them off. That's part of pain, like Deacon Laba was saying. It hurts not having to talk to your mama no more. It hurts not being with your wife or your husband no more. That hurts. But those are the spirits saying, I'm not keeping the commandments, and neither are you. They got to be cut off. So read it again. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Labor means what, brothers? Work. You got to work to bring forth this truth. You must work. Go ahead. O daughter of Zion. O daughter of Zion. Go ahead. Like a woman in travail. This truth is like a woman in travail. A woman in travail, she has birthing pains. Them pains may be spaced an hour apart, then 30 minutes apart, then minutes apart, then seconds apart. The baby come out! So likewise in this truth, you're going to have days that where you're going to have pain. Problems in this world, you're going to see issues come up. They may be spaced years apart. Months apart, weeks apart, days apart, hours apart, minutes apart, and then that destruction and we are delivered. Everybody understand how this is going to work? Read it again, read it again, read it again. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. That Babylon is Babylon the Great, what it's talking about. Go ahead. There shalt thou be delivered. See, that? that's the evidence. We weren't delivered from ancient Babylon by the Lord, but we're going to be delivered from this Babylon. Go ahead. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. See that? There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. That didn't happen in ancient Babylon. Persia conquered them. We went into the Persian captivity. We sucked again. Everybody understand that? So this is about the Lord redeeming us. Go ahead. Now also many nations are gathered against thee that say, let her be defiled. All nations are against us. Let her, meaning Israel, be defiled. Let them sin, let them sin, let them sin. Let them die. Go ahead. And let our eye look upon Zion. And let our eye look upon Zion. They took the land. Go ahead. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord. These nations don't understand the thoughts of God Almighty. Go ahead. Neither understand they his counsel. Neither do they understand the Bible. That's his counsel. Go ahead. For he shall gather them as the sheaves into the flood. Watch and this. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. Arise and thresh, meaning beat them, O daughter of Zion. Go ahead. For I will make thine horn iron. I will make you powerful as iron. Go ahead. And I will make thy hoofs brass. I will make your hooves like brass. Go ahead. And thou shalt beat in pieces many people. Y'all don't want this victory. Y'all want this victory. That's right. It's that we going to beat in pieces many people. That's right. Read it again. Read it again. And thou. And thou shalt beat in pieces many people, uh -huh. and I will consecrate their gain Meaning unto their the Lord. Meaning their wealth, the wealth of the nation, I will consecrate their gain. Go ahead. 
unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. And their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. We're going to take all their wealth and consecrate it to the Lord. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Now let's keep reading. Go ahead. Now, gather thyselves in troops. Now, gather yourselves in troops. Meaning, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. O daughter of troops. O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. Uh -huh. These nations laid siege against us at one time, and they still do today. They shall smite the judge of Israel. They beat the judge of Israel. They beat Christ. Go ahead. With a rod upon the cheek. With a rod upon the cheek. Yeah, give me the precept to prove that Matthew 27.30. So y'all know I ain't making stuff up. Bishop always making stuff up. No, I ain't. Read that, Matthew 27, 30. The book of Matthew, chapter 27 and verse 30. And they spit upon him. And he spit upon, upon the Lord. Go ahead. And took the reed. And took the reed. And smote him on the head. And hit him on his head. And after that, they had mocked him. And then they mocked the Son of God, our Messiah, our King, our Lord, our Almighty God. That's what they did. They took the robe off from him uh -huh. and put his own raiment on him. Let's go on back. Micah 5 and 1 again. The book of Micah, chapter 5 and verse 1. Now gather thyselves in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. Come on. But thou Bethlehem, Ephrathah, through Thou be little, though, though, though. though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be a ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Who's that talking about, brothers? Christ. Talk about Christ. That's Matthew two and six. Y'all write that down. Go ahead. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth. Have brought forth. See that? Therefore will he give them up. Talking about us. Until the time that she which travaileth have brought forth. Brought forth what? Go ahead. Then the remnant of his brethren. That's us. Then the remnant of his brethren. as you and me. Shall return unto the children of Israel. We're going to return as the Israelites. We ain't African Americans no more. We ain't Puerto Ricans. We ain't Haitians. We ain't Dominicans. We are the Israelites. That's right. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. Come on. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. And the Lord shall feed in the strength of the Lord. Come on. In the, maj in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. That's the Father. Go ahead. And they shall abide. For now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Christ is going to be great unto the ends of the earth. Go ahead. And this man shall be the peace. Christ is the peace. Right, give, me, give me that in Isaiah 9 and 6 real quick to prove he's the peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. A son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Y'all don't realize Christ ain't setting up no church group. He's setting up a government. What do y'all think New Jerusalem is? A government. What do you think the 144,000 is about? A government of leading men. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Mm -hmm. The Mighty God. Mm -hmm. The Everlasting Father. Mm -hmm. The Prince of Peace. That's what I wanted. The Prince of Peace. Let's go on back now. Verse 5. Micah 5 and 5. The book of Micah, chapter 5 and verse 5. And this man shall be the peace when the Assyrians shall come into our land. Yeah, and Assyrian, when they took over Jerusalem. Go ahead. And when he shall tread in our palaces. When he tread in our palaces over on this side of the earth. Watch this. Then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. I wonder who these seven shepherds and eight principal men are. That's a total of how many? Fifteen. Give me that in second Ezra one real quick. Thirty-eight to forty. Who are these fifteen men? Go ahead. The book of second Ezra. Chapter 1 and verse 38. And now, brother, behold, what glory, and see the people that cometh from the east, unto whom I will give for leaders. For leaders, Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob, Ozias, Hosea, Amos, Amos, 
and Micahs. Micah. Joel. Joel. Abdias. Uh, Obadiah. And Jonas. And Jonah. Nahum. Nahum. And Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Sophonias. Zephaniah. Agaius. Haggai. Zechariah. Zechariah. And Malachi. And Malachi. Which is called also an angel of the Lord. Fifteen prophets. Now there's a lot more. Come on. Scripture about 144. But those are going to be some of the main prophets. Now there's more when you keep reading. Like when you read, uh, well, I don't want to read the rest. Let's go on back because it's about 15. I'm going to just stick there. But when you read on, it talks about Jeremiah coming back, Isaiah coming back. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So now back to Micah 5. The book of Micah, chapter 5 and verse, verse five. 6. 5 again, 5 again. Verse 5. And this man shall be the peace when the Assyrian shall come into our land. And? And when he shall tread in our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. Uh-huh. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with a sword. What is that sword? Give me Hebrews 4 and 12 and blow your nose. <laughs> Hebrews 4, verse 12. I want you to blow your nose. Hebrews 4 and 12, yes, sir. What is this sword? The book of Hebrews, chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, mm -hmm. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Soul and spirit, because these words are spiritual, right? And of the joints and marrow. Now, joints and marrow, that's physical, because after, when New Jerusalem is set up and the Lord sends against these nations, remember what we read? It said, we're going to beat people into, what did it say? Pieces. That's that joint, that part you just read right there, that part again, the physical. And of the joints and marrow. That's physical, go ahead. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Only the Bible can do that. Let's go on back now. Come on. Micah, chapter 5 and verse 6. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword. With the word of God. And the land of Nimrod. The land of Nimrod is Babylon the Great. Everybody understand that? Remember, Nimrod's kingdom was called Babel. Go ahead. And the land of Nimrod, and the entrances thereof. Uh -huh. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian. Now it says, thus shall he, meaning Christ, deliver us from the Assyrian. It's going to get so bad, Christ says, y'all teaching the Bible, you're dying, I'm going to have to come and save you. Everybody understand that? Because yes, teaching the Bible, we can only wake up our people and prophesy. So the Lord said, I got to come save you. Go ahead. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian when he cometh into our land and when he treadeth within our borders. Watch this. And the remnant of Jacob. Now after Christ delivers us, it says in verse 7, read it again. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people. Mm, mm, mm. Go ahead. As a dew from the Lord. We going to be everywhere. Go ahead. As the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man, uh -huh. nor waiteth for the sons of men. Because we wait, we got to wait on the Lord. Go ahead. And the remnant of Jacob. And the remnant of Jacob, that's you and me. Shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people as a lion amongst the beasts of the forest. What do beasts of the field do, if beasts of the forest do to a lion? But run. Go ahead. Run for their lives. As a young lion. And, and not as an old lion, it said a what? As a young lion. We gonna be like a young lion. Go ahead. Come on. As a young lion among the flocks of sheep. What can sheep do to a lion? Nothing but be food. Go ahead. Who, if he go through. When we go through these nations. Both tread it down. We're going to tread them down. And tear it in pieces. We're going to tear them in pieces. And none can deliver. Nobody going to save these nations. Come on, come on. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversary. That's right. Come on. And all thine enemies shall be cut off. So what is he going to give us? Power. That's He's going right. to give us power. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, mm -hmm. and I will destroy thy chariots, uh -huh. and I will cut off the cities of thy land, 
and throw down all thy strongholds. He's going to throw down all the strongholds of the nations. Go ahead. And I will cut off witchcraft out of thine hand. Believe it or not, witchcraft is practiced here in America. Witchcraft is done. The TV, the internet, all that is witchcraft. The technology is all witchcraft. Go ahead. And thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Uh -huh. Thy graven images also will I cut off. And thy standing images out of the midst of thee. All these images here in this country are going to be thrown down. Go ahead. And thou shalt no more worship the work of thine We're hands. We're going to worship idols no more. Go ahead. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee. And I will destroy thy cities. Mm -hmm. And I will execute vengeance. Vengeance. Go ahead. In anger. In anger. And fury. And fury. Upon the heathen. Upon the nations. Such as they have not heard. Such as they have not heard. That's what Daniel 12 was saying the same thing. Micah, Micah 7. Go to chapter 7 and verse 16. Watch this, watch Micah 7 and 16. The book of Micah, chapter 7 and verse 16. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. The nations going to see and be confounded of the might of the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. The nations going to lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. Their ears shall be deaf. That's why he said, I'm going to do a marvelous work in your day. Such as no, such as you've never heard. Okay, that's what the Lord is going to do. Here we go, Zechariah 12 and 8. Zechariah 12 and 8. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12 and verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Uh-huh. And he that is feeble among them. And he that is feeble amongst us. At that day. Put them images up. I want them mighty images. And he that is feeble amongst us. Go ahead. At that day. At that day. Shall be as David. Shall be as David. Come on. And the house of David. And the house of David. The 144. Shall be as God. Shall be as God on earth. As the angel of the Lord before them. We're going to be as the angel of God before them. Y'all see that thing? Give me Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41.10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41 and verse 10. Hey, 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 wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I want, before we read this, before we read this, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm looking. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. Is this it? Where's the one that says thou worm Jacob? Where I want worm. Oh, it's right here. It's right here. We're right here. Isaiah 41. Start at verse, what did I say? 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41 and verse 10. Fear thou not, you brothers, you scaredy cat brothers, you yellow make me sad brothers, to be fearful. Give me that in Timothy real quick. You know what I want? One in seven. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know why it says the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear? What is fear? Give me Mark 4, verse 40. Here is, this explains fear. I'm scared to teach. I'm fearful. What does that break down to? Read that. The book of Mark, chapter 4 and verse 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they, So what? What? Wait, wait. So fear breaks down to having no what? Faith. No faith. He has not given us that spirit. Go back to Isaiah 41 and 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41 and verse 10. Fear thou not. So he's saying have faith. Don't fear. Don't doubt. Have faith, brothers. Have faith, sisters. Go ahead. For I am with thee. For he is with us. Go ahead. Be not dismayed. Don't be not dismayed. For I am thy God. Read. I will strengthen thee. He said, I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help he thee. He said, I will help you. Go ahead. Yea, I will uphold thee. I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness. This is why we ain't afraid to hit the street here. You just got shot up. 
So what? The Lord is with us. We still going out to teach. Everybody understand that? There's no fear, no doubt. We got faith. Everybody understand that thing? Read. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee. All they that were incensed, all those that are mad at us, hate our guts, want to kill us, want to shoot us. I'm talking about the white man and I'm talking about black, evil Hebrew Israelites too. Read that part again. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They're going to be ashamed and confounded. Go ahead. They shall be as nothing. They, they shall be as nothing. I want all you Edomites, you anti-defamation league to hear this. You give me them other groups they got out there. The SPLC, Southern Poverty, Poverty Law Center. Give me another one. The Canary Mission, the Israeli Project. You black Hebrew Israelites, you weak, evil Christian groups out there. All of you. Read it again. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Uh -huh. They shall be as nothing. They shall be as nothing. Go ahead. And they that strive with thee. And they that strive with us. Shall perish. Shall what? Shall perish. They shall perish. I hope everybody understand that thing. This makes my teeth work. This makes me rejoice my soul. Go ahead. <laughs> Thou shalt seek them. And shall not find them. You're going to seek after them, but you ain't going to find them no more again. Go ahead. Even them that contended with thee. Even all of them that contend with us. They that war against thee shall be as nothing. They that war against us shall be as nothing, God says. Uh -huh. And as, a, as of a thing of naught. And as a thing of naught. Go ahead. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, uh -huh. saying unto thee, Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not, brothers. Fear not, sisters. Go ahead. I will help thee. I will help thee. Come on. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Thou worm, Jacob. Notice he calls us a worm. Because we in these weak bodies, our soul is even as a worm. Remember it said about the wicked? Where their worm dieth not. So it's calling us that worm again. Read it again. Read it again. Verse 14. Fear not. Thou worm Jacob. Thou worm Jacob. And ye men of Israel. Uh -huh. I will help thee. I will help thee. He said it four or five times. I will help you. I will help you. I will help you. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Uh -huh. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Power. He's going to give us power on the earth like it's never been seen before. Go ahead. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. We're going to thresh the mountains, meaning the governments. Go ahead. And beat them small. And we're going to beat the governments of the world small. Go ahead. And shall make the hills as chaff. We're going to make the smaller governments as chaff. Go ahead. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away. And when we fan these nations, the wind shall carry them away. Go ahead. And the whirlwind shall scatter and them. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice, rejoice in the Rejoice, brothers. Rejoice, sisters. Go ahead. And shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. And we're going to glory in the Holy One of Israel. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. And with that, we say shalom. All praise to the Most High. All praises. All praises. All praises. Yo, yo, Bishop just went to that place. He just went to the place and came back. Bishop, you here? You see, uh, this is, uh, is this Bishop Natana? All right. Yeah, you here. Yeah, he just went to the place and come back, man. All praises to the most high, man. All praises. These are the classes we need to uplift our spirit. Because we just read that everybody that's coming against us and fighting against us, we just read that God is going to help us. You all understand? And we just read all of them going to be destroyed. So this is where faith come in. Do we believe this? We got to believe this because I'm letting you all know the battle going to get tough. Okay, always remember, the strongest soldiers will always get the hardest fight. Okay, the battle going to be tough. We're going to be fighting against. We fighting against this whole world. So it's going to get bad. 
Our life's going to be in danger. Okay? So this is where these classes come in. Do you believe the Lord going to help us? Do you believe the Lord? I'm telling you, things going to get so bad. Some of you are going to be wondering. Your faith going to be questioning. You understand? Do you believe what the Bible say? The Lord going to help us. Okay, so you brothers stay strong in this walk, man. Don't matter what happened. Don't matter you see obstacles and fight coming after you. Don't give up, brothers. The Lord said, everybody that fight against us, yo, they going to disappear. All praise to the Most High. Let's give another round of applause for that fire class. Hey, IT, get that first video ready. The fight is bigger than your local street, that one. Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ, bless Captain Paulo here. Hey, IUIC, Oklahoma, we out here in Piss Park. We doing the community cleanup, all right? We just got done picking up trash, the brush from the storm that just happened. We out here taking care of our, our community, man. We ain't out here just talking on the streets. We out here putting in action what we preach, all right? So Shalom, Most High in Christ, bless. Come join the fight. The community, come join us. Let's, let's clean up our, the east side of Oklahoma City. All right, let's make this place look good again. All right, Shalom, most high in Christ's place. I don't want to stress you. You just gotta do you. Do you. Free up from the drama. Gotta focus on you. You gotta elevate. Elevate. Yeah, yeah. You gotta elevate. 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 Yeah, yeah. Some people will never change. It's broke. <laughs> strange, so strange. Never growing, stay the same. I can't be around you, gotta rearrange. Cleaning up our community. How long have you got you? Till the community's cleaned up. All praises. All praises. Let's give a shout out to IUIC OKC. The fight is bigger than your local street corner. Our communities need us. So IUIC OKC took the call, and decided to hit the community to help our people. See what unity in the community looks like. Nobody cares about our people, but we do. Hashtag God's movement. Next video. Let's give a shout out to IUIC Orlando. Captain Kimuel with IUIC Orlando sits down with Christian Pastor having a non-hostile conversation about the Bible and who the Gentiles are in the Bible. Find out who you are. Full video coming soon. Play that video. I'm one of the captains in, in IUIC. Well, I, I just lose okay. that. You know, okay. I, I didn't even do that intentionally. I know when we get stuff from. So, yeah, you know, I, I'm Christian. We Christian. But in the day, you know, I'm everywhere. Okay. I'm okay. everywhere. Right. I'm not talking to every pastor. <laughs> Many of us, like like yourself, mm -hmm. we were the problem. Right. So we understand that. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, some of us are ex-drug dealers, mm -hmm. gang bangers, murderers. You didn't say that. Uh, um, when the scriptures say the two walk together except they be agreed, that's where a lot of times the, the problem comes in because ultimately God said these things that we're suffering right now, we're suffering because of our disobedience to our commandments. All praises, all praises. Shout out to Orlando. IUIC Kansas City got a chance to speak to a local pastor, and it was a success. The pastor embraced us and the word of God. Our goal is not to steal any members, but to make sure the word of God is being taught, thus saith the Lord. Play that video. It's Kansas City. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ, bless. Hey, I'm Captain Red with IUIC Kansas City. I got Officer Benai. Officer Benai here with me. Hey, we had a chance to sit down with a local pastor, man, here in Kansas City. The conversation went well. Hey, check it out. Most High Christ, bless. I think our generation has done a poor job of helping people to see where we fit in, where we are. Because for a long time, you know, we were into, we, I grew up with the white Jesuses. I mean, when we out there teaching on the streets or whatever somebody may say about us, 
Our desire is for our people to be safe. Absolutely. You understand? To get out of this, this hole that we in. And I know to a degree that our traditional churches have, for the most part, embraced a part of that indoctrination. And I'm, I'm going to embrace an opportunity to 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 uh, dialogue some more. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank I, you. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. All oh, praise. Oh, praise. Oh, Good praise. Good night. Oh, Good night. Praise. Yes, I'm going to try to get there. Shout out to Captain Harev. IUIC Seattle had the honor of premiering Joseph's dream to the local community. Accurate Bible imagery was displayed, and the people saw their true history in film for the first time. Play that video. And Shalom, most on Christ, blessed Officer Caleb, IUIC Seattle. Right now, we're in the movie theater. We're about to get ready to play Joseph's Dream. We got a lot of people right now on June 10th that want to see Joseph's Dream. All praises to the most out of that. Heroes. Ain't it funny when the guys you looked up to turn to zeros Who was kids mesmerized by the bad guys But now that we older, we look at what's really the purpose of our All praises Original royalty performing at the Juneteenth Stop the Violence Performance Night Showing our brothers and sisters that we have righteous music in IUIC As the Israelites and we are here to flood out the evil music that Esau forces our people to push Go ahead, play that. Yeah. The real. Let's get it. 24-7. 365. No days off. Let's go. The time is now. Don't lose focus. Keep your eyes on this wristwatch. 24-7. 365. This work will never stop. Casting down imaginations. Drag queens teaching babies. Some of my people still struggling with them crack babies. Spiritual food on the Sabbath. Try these healing crazes. Tougher than some flip. That's how the Lord made me. Study, pray, apply. We gotta seek the Lord daily. Say I'm repentant. This your chance. Amazing grace is waiting. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Paved the way and made it great. Not talking about the days in the ghosts. So here we clocking in. Babylon prepared. For boom, the chariots they coming soon. Them chariots they coming soon. All praises. Virginia was blitzed by the prof prophets of God for the fourth of you lie and gave our people the vision they have never seen before. Go ahead, play that. Hey, Shalom, most high in Christ, bless y'all, see what it is, y'all see all these mighty men of the Lord out here bringing awareness to our people. We have solutions, the Bible has solutions, and the Lord has sent his prophets, we, many captains of the Lord is out here to fight for the souls of our people here in Virginia, all right? This has never been seen or done here in Virginia before, all right? It's enough of the foolishness, stay tuned. Hey, hey, where you been at? I've been on the block teaching my people where they drill at. Oh, look the mic. Boogie the days of most, they sell mics and he turn in corners where people do it sin. Yeah. 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 teach your people, Boogie. Oh, Read it again. Yeah. The woman shall yeah. not yeah. put that which put Jane in the house. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 Put on a woman's court. With it, can't stand with it. I'm kill switching like crazy. I must heal it in my seal and it can't let vision get jaded. All my kin with it, we built different. They might think of us crazy and we still visit. All praises, all praises. Touch one, touch us all. The prophet showed up in force to defend our brother and show we ain't being moved off any corner. Play that video. They're not doing God's work. Y'all better believe that. I don't care how many street corners y'all standing on. Y'all better come up off of them corners and leave people alone. Y'all can't reach nobody like that. Yep. So now you got one over there, one of them over there leaking, and it don't make no difference if they can accept. They shot him twice. They shot him twice. They shot him twice. No, they didn't shoot back. You know what? I bet. They ain't had no guns. I bet you one thing. I bet he stay out for that corner. Be 
in pain, meaning that it's not comfortable to go against the grain of wickedness. It takes real work to stand up in the face of tyranny. Here's an example of the, the exhibition of pain. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? The reason why this is written this way is because this is not something that's common for a lot of people. It's challenging who will be the one that will stand up as opposed to many of us that just lie down. As opposed to many of us that say, you know what, I'm going to envelop myself in the evil. But that Bible says what? Read that. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? The Bible says who? Who among us will stand up? And it's going to be painful when we do this. It's, it's going to take work and labor to stand up against the workers of iniquity. Read it. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Because that's going to take pain. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. When you don't tell your brother that they're breaking the laws, when you don't tell your sisters that they're breaking the law, you are demonstrating hatred towards them. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Thou shalt in all cases, that's what any wise mean. In all cases, you are to correct your brothers. You are to correct your sisters. Go ahead. And not suffer sin upon him. And not allow sin upon them. Not allow them to remain in sin. That's how you save their life. All praises. Shout out to IUIC Kansas. Subscribe to IUIC Diaspora. We need all IUIC members and followers to subscribe to IUIC Diaspora on every social media platform as well. All international channels. We must reach the dispersed of our people. The world of Israel is waiting for you. Play that next one. The prophets of IUIC Japan broke ground in Osaka, Japan to wake up the 12 tribes scattered throughout Japan. Help us by subscribing to the IUIC Japan YouTube page. 12 tribes worldwide. Go ahead, play that video. Yo, we go to distance across the waters. Teach our people this is a miss. Trail tribes worldwide, this is redemption. Yeah, yeah, this is redemption. This is redemption. We go to distance, cross the waters, teach our people. This is a mission. Yeah, yeah, this is redemption. Hey, Shalom, this is Soldier Jonah. Soldier Timothy. We're out here in Namba, Osaka, Japan. We're out here looking for you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of the lost 12 tribes. Well, yeah, we're going out to search for you trying to wake you up to your true identity. 12 tribes worldwide. Oh, Groundbreaking work was done. The foundation of IUIC Ecuador is established as the light of the Lord begins to shine on the northern kingdom of Israel. Continue to support the Booster Club. Israel, pull out your phones. Go to YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And subscribe to IUIC Ecuador social media pages. Play that video. How can we not be the same people? We'll never be treated equal. Jeremiah 50, 33. No this is the secret. Take the captives by the eagle. Don't let the devil deceive you. Both share the same history, same energy since the fetal. Been fighting inside the womb with strangers in his cathedral. All France has to do is give back what they took. You know, no, honestly, the French have no issue of color or what. We have a oh, that's good. We have a problem of uh, level taking of life. things. Level of life. <laughs> and taking things. <laughs> yeah, you gotta give it back. Don't worry, we'll, don't worry, you'll give it back one day. We give it, one day they'll give it back. 
debo temer. No le enseña que Jesucristo es negro y que en realidad no tiene el verdadero mensaje. Si deprimido y de repente se hacen claros los lentes. En marcha vamos delante, unido toda mi gente. Están muy hermosas las camisetas, tan lindas, que están recorriendo el mundo con la gran comisión predicando en el Evangelio de Yeshua y Amachía. ¿De qué color es Cristo? Negro. ¡Negro! ¡Escucha al niño! Cristo dijo que tenemos que ser como niños para heredar el reino de los cielos. Dígame su pregunta. Hey, yo, I hope you all see what's happening. All of you, you spectators that's online, you all see what's happening. The work getting done without you all. You all understand? We don't ask nobody for tithes or none of, none of that, but what we ask you all to do is support us. If you ain't coming to the school, still support us financially with your free will offerings. You understand? Because all the traveling that we doing and all of that, guess what it costs? Money. Guess what? We don't get no money from the government. You know, some people say, oh, they should, they get 501c3. Yo, the, the things we doing, we do it by coming together and putting all our little monies together. You feel what I'm saying? And in order for us to take this gospel far, listen, we need support. Okay? So you brothers and sisters out there that got the means and way to support us. And listen, support us, man. Okay? Every week, you all see what's going on. Where Bishop was last week? South Africa, where brothers was last week. You know, we have brothers every week, brothers in different state, in different countries teaching, man. Okay, so we need your support. If you're a part of the mission, you listen, support us. You ain't coming to the school. Okay, support us financially, man. Okay, let's get this done. Put the, put the reward up. Is reunited in Christ for information leading to the arrest and conviction of criminals in the attempted murder of our brother. We got a reward for $10,000. If you have any information, call KCPD Tips Hotline at 816-474-8477 or IUIC at 855-484-4842. Extension 7013. Share this ad. We are looking for the suspects that shot our brother. Play the next video. Hold on. Let me see where I'm at. The gospel is spreading throughout the four corners of the earth like wildfire. This is history in the making. We need everyone to subscribe to IUIC Eritrea and IUIC Ethiopia on YouTube. They told me I look like an Ethiopian in South Africa. I said, I'm not Ethiopian. I'm an Israelite. What the hell's wrong with y'all? But all praise it. Whatever. The prophets are back. IUIC Barbados is spreading the word of God island wide and making waves with our 30 days of camp. The people of Barbados will know that they are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. We will turn this island right side up with the word of God. Play that video. Get him. Holy the visual. This moment is pivotal. Clear like a digital. Phonies can't copy original. We the first on the earth in the physical. You still in our image is criminal. All your hatred is known and it's visible. We breaking the mold of traditional. You Negroes are mythical. More like a biblical miracle. Bringing the fire. The smiths of the trade. Trapped in the image. They try to evade. We spray from the bottom. The roots of the braid. Fruits of the tree. We ain't throwing no shade. Our brothers are dying. Ain't no use in lying. The damage is seen on the news coverage. The reason we sleep in ignoring the horror. Because we don't see God when we see each other. Oh, Officer Raphael to my right. So to the side. To my left. So to Simeon. We IOC Barbados. We're here to open up the minds of the people. We're going to turn the account within this month to open the minds of the people that they are not the so called Barbadians or Bajans. We are the true Israelites according to the Bible. They are not Bajans. We are the true Israelites according to the Bible. That's so we're right. going to turn the account within this month and we're hitting every parish, all of the parish, every month. That's all with that we say Shalom. Shalom. Oh, I'm about to
out. It's coming out. The gospel is spreading throughout the four corners of the earth like wildfire. This history, it, this is history in the making. Subscribe to IUIC Eritrea. We need everyone to pull out their phones right now. Subscribe to IUIC Levant on every social media platform. The dispersed of Israel in Iraq, Iran, and the Levant region are waiting for you. Pull out your phones. Go ahead, brothers. Pull out your phones. Go ahead, sisters. You know you're on the phone all day. Pull out the phones. Subscribe to IUIC Levant. Like and subscribe to IUIC Spain on all social media platforms and help wake up the 12 tribes. The prophets of God hit Spain, Madrid, and Barcelona, was visited with the word of God and the people hearkened. It's nation time. Subscribe to IUIC Spain page on all social media outlets. Go ahead, play that video. Hold on. So, so Bishop, so when you made the call for war for all the brothers to rise up yes. to hit these places all over the world, the the the, the brothers rising up. That's right. You know, all praises to the Most High, man. Yo, that's what a general does. All praises to the Most High. Okay, all praises for you, brothers. That's that's getting up, rising up, and you going out there and you waking up your people in these different countries. All praises, man. The curse of Miriam. Donate to the curse of Miriam today at Matthew213.com. Premiering tonight on Original Royalty Recordings, the first video release, My Story Part 2, available on Original Royalty, all digital stores and streaming sites. Play that video. tribes of Israel, bro. Yeah. Like, we make up God's chosen people. See, right here, we don't worship that way, Christ. And the Bible says Christ look like me and you. That's what we worship. Revelation 1.14. You yeah. know, like wood. Yeah. You like bread. Yeah. Burn in a fern. Just like me and you, bro. You look just like us. We gotta wake up. Lord, dearly departed, we are gathered here today in the sight of God and in the sight of man, and we got a plan for the money. All right, all right, all right. Now I know, I know you brothers and sisters, you've been listening to me sing all day, you know I can go all day long. Ain't that right, sister? 
there's somebody out there in the choir, out there in the audience that might have a word for you. Huh? Do you got a word? Do you, do you got a word? Oh, I've been in my feelings for a while about you and how you teach all my people about the lies and not the truth you know it stresses me out me to leave it vexes my soul spiritually Decided for myself to study hard to show that self approved the guy rightly dividing the word of truth. I know we all make mistakes, confession fights. Right, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Don't give them too much, man. Okay, so yo, y'all want to see the rest? Go to original royalty. No, that's some good RB right there, man. You understand? That brother could sing, man. That boy could sing. He could sing. All praises. Deacon, that concludes our announcements. Everybody got wine and bread? Let's give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who laid down his life so you too can have life. You ready? Yeah, you got to read it, bro. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we say, Amen. All praise to the most I mean for the bread. All praise, all praises. Men Israel, are you ready? ready. Are you ready? ready? What time is it? Time. What time is it? Time. What time is it? Time. Who's, the Who's the king? Who's the king? Who's the king? What color is he? Black. What color is he? Black. What color is he? Black. Who are we? Israelites. Who are we? Israelites. Who are we? Israelites. Twelve tribes. Worldwide. Twelve tribes. Worldwide. Unity. 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 Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Now finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His what? His what? His what? His what? His what? 